All right. Welcome, everyone. We got podcast number 104, the man, the myth. We got Ryan DePaulo in the house. Ryan, how's it going? Good. What's going on, man? Ming? It's going. We're going, you know. It's a crazy world, crazy time, but uh, thank you for coming on. This is, a, this is a lot going on in the poker world at the moment. COVID, people at home playing a lot of online poker. Again, congrats on your, your parking lot bracelet, which is all time. I think it's just, you know, legendary as it gets. And then you had the vlogs and the whole content to go with it. So again, congrats on that. Do you have the bracelet? Do you keep it nearby you at all times or is it, is yeah, it uh, right up here? Actually, it's, uh, it's, I started wearing it for online final tables right, right after, like when I'd stream and stuff. And then that right. didn't fully work. So I was like, I don't want to jinx it fully, but I, ha I have it here. You got it nearby. If you need to rub it, you it's got on it. Standby always. Yes. It's so beautiful. Such a such a great time we live in that you can win bracelets from parking lots and on your computer. So I, I this has been talked about. You obviously are on Joey Ingram's podcast. Shout out to Poppy. And, and you've done a lot of talk about it. But I just got to I got to hear it from you and, and understand a bit about it. Can you just kind of relive this? It's got to be fun to talk about anyway. You've probably yeah. done it a ton of times now. But give me give me a, a little bit of that, that what happened and how that transpired that you ended up like not at a hotel, not at a friend's house but you actually were playing a World Series of Poker bracelet from your car. I guess you have to go over from New York, right? Because uh, it's not legal in New York, but it's legal in New Jersey. So you cross a bridge and right. you do that. But then like, what? What? how did it all go down? Why were you not set up at like a spot? Right. Sounds so like yeah, well, so, as mean? you said, yeah. Well, first of all, yeah, I don't mind. I, like, this is why I think uh, getting people on a podcast to talk about themselves may, may not be as hard as people might think because people right. generally love talking about themselves, especially me, even though I don't think I'm that self-centered, but especially winning a bracelet. I'll, uh, listen, I would love that. I, I couldn't imagine. I would talk, I want to talk about it every day. Honestly, it's all time. It really. <laughs> is. I actually have, before you dive in, I, my boy, Holy Cannoli, who, you know, Tommy, who's on ACR. Have you seen that video? Do you know the story about him and what he did? No, with what I'm, I'm going to send you this video. Cause it's, this is, it was it's until yours. This was the only thing I think even possibly close. He was in Vegas. Uh, it's like 2017 or 16. You know, he November 9th took a pretty cold one, whatever. He got like aces all in, loses the next year, though. He comes out World Series 3300 online. He's at the Bellagio playing PLO. OK, he leaves his session at the cash game. He's having like an all time epic run in, in PLO, big cash game. OK, he gets up, take puts a case on his chips goes over to the Rio, puts like whatever, 6,600 or 33 or whatever, one or two buy-ins for this online tournament, comes back, okay, gets back to the table, one table's on his cell phone for about eight more hours. He's already been playing for like 10 hours. Uh, one tabling while playing PLO has a record win, one of like just a crushing live session, gets down to the final table, his battery's dying, it's around 11 p.m. <laughs> and he's chip leader at the final table. He calls me, I have a vlog of this, like the whole thing. He calls me, I'm at my condo at Panorama, He's like, bro, can you come get me? Like, I, I'm, I'm about to make the final table. My battery shot. I got no charger. And like, I want to come play at your house, you know? Cause like, he wants to be on a computer. He's on his phone. <laughs> yeah. so I'm like, all right. So I get in my car. My buddy Waxman and Begley were with me. Um, and we, and we drive over. I keep, I pick him up at the valet and I'm going to take him. And then his disconnects, right? It's like a break. He's waiting outside on his cell phone. I brought a power pack. So he gets in the car. We're about to drive home. And then he just like, was like, dude, f this! Like, I'm just gonna stay here and play. So he he uh we I park my car, I go in with him into the sports book, and he wins the bracelet from his cell phone in the Bellagio sports book at like 4:30 in the morning. And I'm like vlogging the hands of like him playing on the video, like on his phone, and then he ends up like shipping the thing for 330 grand uh at like 4 30 in the morning like the janitor is coming over telling me can't be here they're cleaning in there <laughs> like moving. but it, it's a great video Yo, i'll it's check it out i didn't know that was it's a fun. vlog honestly, of yours that's so sick that's it's so a sick. Fun, fun video but sorry so that's the only thing i could even remotely think of that's similar but yours is all different time all different types of uh levels so go ahead give me the breakdown of how you did it why that happened yeah, well, maybe it's worth it to go back even because I had an experience in Vegas just like talking about inefficient phone playing uh, or whatever before winning the bracelet. Similar to, to Canuli, and he's mad fun and degen. It's so degen to not realize the amount of EV you're giving up and just be like, yeah, but I'm just going to go for it. And then like just like get that lucky. It, it, he's he's fun, though, at, at uh, America's Card Room Live Cages and stuff in Costa Rica. Yeah. I've hung out with him and and uh. But anyway, I need to check that out. He's that's sick. But I, you don't have any time to drive, right? So like, I was in uh, March, um, right, right. I believe it was March, or maybe it was January. But I entered like some ring event um, for five hundred hours after busting a live event at the win, and I was in Vegas, and I was like, you know what? Let me just play this. 
ended up taking me like two hours to drive back from the wind to the uh, to the Aria where I was staying because I was playing this tournament. You only have five minutes to do things and you're like sweating it. I ended up getting third for like 33K playing the entire time on my phone. I couldn't even see the lobby, like how the pay jumps were like. I had experience on like horribly inefficient deep runs. Uh, <laughs> but so anyway, so the World Series of Poker comes uh, as most people listening or watching this probably know. Um, you know, you physically needed to be in New Jersey or Nevada to play. You could live anywhere, but you just physically needed to be in those places. I live in Manhattan, New York City, which is like, I live maybe two miles or three miles just from the edge of where New Jersey starts. Um, so I was like, man, I live so close. It's so tilting. But anyway, the events didn't start till like 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, it, I believe, in in uh you know, on the East coast, they didn't start till 6 PM. So a lot of the nights in July, I was just, um, early on, I was getting a hotel maybe a couple of times. I, I don't even remember this now. I'm sorry. I'm so scatterbrained, dude. Year. Honestly, this year is, but, and also let's pause quickly. You say you may have COVID right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm allowed to have COVID is the other thing, which is maybe an excuse for why my brain isn't working. Uh, I got to go get tested after the show. <laughs> Shit, man, it's crazy too. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, so sorry. This is a caveat that you're here. You didn't cancel, didn't postpone. So, thank you for being here. But, so, all right. So, you got this. You're going over. You're kind of. You got the whole. You got to go over the bridge. Pretty insane situation, just in itself. Uh, but so, so, so you just yeah, break it down. You bring all right, all right. So, a couple of days before I had been, I had been, I played a couple events just on the phone, just being like, you know what, I'm probably gonna bust. Then it's gonna. I could still sleep at home. I'm only three miles away. Like, why would I, you know, be out in Jersey? Uh, especially some of them were freeze out events. If I just like punt my chips right away at seven o'clock, yeah. I'm there with a room. I, I want to go home. I put a couple just on the phone in the car. I vlogged all this. You can see it on my YouTube channel. But uh, then a couple I played at my um, girlfriend's brother's house with like my two future nieces or whatever and her, their family. And they're, they're great. But that was distracting. I busted one of the events earlier in the series while reading one of them a bedtime story. Literally, I was like, had the laptop on and and was like, they were like, like wanting to hang out. So this was actually the best setting I had played in um, up until that point, believe it or not, a laptop in a car with a hotspot. Because before that, it had either been a phone in the car or a laptop with like kids running around, you know, and me even being distracted, even if they were <laughs> not climbing all over me, I was like, I'm a scatterbrain, as you could already tell from the three minutes we've been talking. Uh, so I, I drive out there, didn't know where I was going to go. I just like looked up first. I tried to pull over on this on the road on the road overlooking Manhattan, which I'm glad I didn't because I wouldn't have been able to get food on breaks. I was more than like four minutes drive from anything. But right. the the GPS thought I was still in New York, so it wasn't letting me register. So then I just kept driving when the just looked up parking lot on my GPS. It was like this Whole Foods, but with other stores, my hotspot wasn't working. I had to connect to their Wi-Fi, and I started playing. Um, and I don't know if you want me to keep talking talking through it, but every every hour I would get booted off um, their Wi-Fi because I don't think they're used to people being on for hours and hours. Right, and, and I'd have to like like re get their web page to pop up. That's like, I agree to have all my data stored by this fucking mall or whatever. Sorry for How cursing. Crazy is that? That's gotta be so like, so stressful that you're, I mean, is it time? It's like mid hand. It can happen. I mean, yeah. you're, and I mean, so like, does that change your strategy at all? Yo. Are there times where you just be like all in or like, not like leave yourself, you know, go to a turn and you just be like, I got a jam. Like this is close. Did you, you knew the hour was coming kind of hundred percent. Yeah. That that's the, yeah. You know, and I haven't really talked about a lot of the crazy parts of this, even if my, in my vlog, cause there's not like, room for it because it's not really strategy vlog and stuff but the strategy yeah. of, of, of knowing you're going to get disconnected yeah i open ripped like ace king for 17 bigs and like the cutoff or hijack like i always am just raising that you know like pretty deep because i knew that time was approaching you know stuff like that yeah there was one hand i think i blasted turn bigger than i would i don't remember the details of this other hand but exactly what you're talking about like i i was just like i need to just get get it in now or else um and, and, and when you, I guess I, I got to understand a little bit here. So you've, you've had some success. Uh, you've, you got a very successful YouTube channel. You stream on Twitch. You've got a 200 K score. I think that was at the world series last year or something. That was, I mean, that was like sort of, was that like a, a breakout for you that, that score in terms of your role and what it was? And it was $400 buy-in tournament. It's just, yeah. Yeah. The Colossus, the, that was for sure. Like, 
my break. Sorry to interrupt your question. I'm sorry. I mean, so was that that was like did that did that kind of put you in a different stratosphere in terms of what buy-ins and where you were at? Uh, did you have a deal already then? Um, were you already was your YouTube channel like already pretty successful at that point, or was it did this did this kind of like push you everything just kind of get going after that, or were you already on the on the rise? No, they, they all go. It was like sort of like I already was like it, America's Card Room had uh, sent me to a live cage before the Colossus run end. Okay. I was like sort of building a relationship with them and I had, uh, I don't remember how many subscribers enough that people were there who were like fans of the channel. Like, like it, you can and see in the vlog, like, you had a Twitch already at that point. And I that didn't game. have Twitch yet. Um, it was okay. just all from YouTube, but when okay. I was like on, on my Instagram updating that I was running in the Colossus, like, uh, you know, they're one in the same, right? Both successes like help doubly because it's, also helping my right youtube channel or whatever grow and twitch and stuff I mean, it's amazing like that it's just it's a, it, it, everything goes right when you hit a big score you have content for it like everything kind of just comes together and i think people to, to realize how hard it is like to, to hit a live tournament and this 400 there's thirteen thousand entries in this tournament this is not like a 500 or a thousand person tournament that's just I mean, it's like winning the lottery if you make the final table you get third here what what happened there was it was it in reach were you short were you laddering did you have the chip lead tell me a little bit of, i i'm sorry i'm scattering around because i want to talk i do want to come back to the bracelet parking lot when i just want to understand this first because this was sort of your pivotal this was like a massive score tell me about this one and then let's i want to kind of jump back to, to how the difference was was this was this like you know how how was your preparation at that final table and what was your ride in that were you were you what where did where did you shake out throughout the final table there uh, well, it was so sick that whole run. Um, I was luckily able to vlog it. I'm not trying to like plug my YouTube vlogs, but but it's it was like sure, I'm man, always so gotta, interested. Great. Well, <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm actually here to plug my new uh, plunger series or some corny joke. No, I'm joking. But so I uh, I've I'm always interested like when they do the November nine, how people's different mm -hmm. graphs are, what their days were like in so many yeah. days going through yeah. a giant field tournament, and then real like when like the big blind. Even when the big blind is just a starting stack or two starting, it's so cool. Like those deep runs to me, it's so like degen exciting. And then yeah. this is the Colossus that it was, you know, the big 50 last year. So it wasn't the biggest event, but it's still, it's like, you know, what normally is the biggest field event, right? At the World Series or whatever. It was my first time at the World Series of Poker too. Wow. I'd never been um, super excited to be there. I had a backer uh, and, you know, I had 44% of myself in a $400 tournament. Um, you know, which, which is sick, but like, um, I was glad to be able to, to be documenting it on, on my way to the deep run. And yeah, as a, as I was getting, I was, it's so different winning a bracelet in the car versus like where you have days in between a live event where even just the environment of being there feels so much bigger. Like, you know, three tables left in the Colossus feels infinitely bigger than, you know, even the final table uh of the bracelet event it was a smaller event the bracelet event was 500 and i won 159k for first but still like the the it's such a weird experience that there's like all the this environment around you people are there jeff boski right. shout out to jeff boski was there filming and like sweating me and then talking to me super fun and then going into the final table i had just met who would become like my coach and now just my friend uh basically but he he helped me like Who crash course on ICM the night before, basically. Um, and all I was like able to take away from it was like, uh, just play like a knit. But <laughs> I mean, yeah. I learned some of the nuance. And who's that? Or is it private? Is it coach? Is your coach private? Or is that no, yeah. So I mean, not real. Chris, he was he's now he's just like my friend. Like we don't really uh, study, even though it'll help me if I have a question. And right. Um, but okay. he, he, I met through the channel, like all of it. So I don't even know what's what anymore, but any, I'm glad that I make clear in my vlogs and in my stuff. And I'll say now, like, I'm not good. Like you were like, you know, did that enter you into another stratosphere? And I know, you know, this, but people listening or watching may not that I'm just, anybody can get lucky. So yeah, it put me in another stratosphere as far as being able to, <laughs> to blast off, but it didn't right. make me any better at poker. It did because I reinvested a lot of it in study, but let me, let me, uh, all right. Let, I have so many questions because I really do find your ride and journey and just overall, I find you fascinating within poker. I think it's so good. I think you're in that, you know, people that are willing to take the time, do the extra effort, put out content. I think it's so important for poker and it's just so good. And to see, you know, you kind of burst on the scene quickly, have some success, 
with you know big scores and and profile it it's great like there's no question like you are very very good for poker and 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 how you kind of portray it i like your your attitude i like your your demeanor about everything so i i want to know more about it i also wanted to ask about the youtube stuff because i started in 2017 at the world series and you know what's funny i had my i won i'm 34 years old i had i believe 10 winning years at the world series i final table almost every year something i had winning every year i was positive in tournaments i started youtube vlogging in 2017 i had my first losing world series and my second in a row in 2018 and i got much better at poker you know, like I've st- I, like where I look away, where I, I mean, I think that's true for everyone. If you're playing seriously, right. You learn, you, 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 you do some extra work and like looking back three, four years ago, even I'm like, wow, like it's embarrassing almost, you know, to see where I was, but I found it very difficult. And I, and again, you can't just say it's so much, there's not enough of a sample size to say like, oh, it's because of this or like this, but I started thinking about it and what was happening. I was coming late to tournaments, um, a lot The the content was distracting to, to film, record, I would miss hands. I wasn't really present. You know, I'm doing social media, Instagram stuff. I'm doing videos, I'm recording stuff. I was not fully engaged. How was your ride in that 400 classes? Were you there this first hand? Were you pretty attentive? Like, did you feel that it affected your game at all? And, and, and I'm very curious on this because I think this is a big trade-off and it's very difficult to do both and be focused because it matters. Being present, being, being engaged is a huge deal, uh, especially now people are so good. The, the level has gotten much better and there's not just as much give me. So, so how do you feel on that? That you're, did you feel like, give me your ride of, of content versus playing and focus. And then during that tournament, let's just take that Colossus for example. All right. Yeah. I, at that time. And then, yeah, I'll could talk about Twitch later and how it's changed my streaming, this exact thing that you're talking about, but yeah. for that Colossus and that world series of poker, I was just so excited to be there and primarily, um, motivated by content basically that it i wasn't aware of like i am now the amount of like ev i'm giving up or how big of a spot it is like i didn't like really your know hoodie. you got your hoodie on right there. yeah yeah right right just repping minus ev <laughs> um so i was i was uh allowing making of the video to take up quite a bit of my brain jeff boski being there helped me a lot because he was like filming stuff from the rail and So, and then the final table was broadcast. So I knew I could pull the hands from that later. I didn't need to remember them or film shots. You're not allowed to be on your phone, but leading up to that, I was mostly just like not even thinking about the sacrifice of focus that I was making. And I was just making, trying to get the shots I could get, you know what I mean? Um, But, but since then I for sure have, have realized this, like uh, whatever. And yeah, I don't know. Like, I think I'm clear that I want to be like, if I had to choose between being a poker player or a video creator, I'd rather be a video creator. Um, it's painful to say, cause I can't Im- imagine not playing poker, but like Twitch, I don't, I was streaming Sundays for a while, which is so retarded for me. I'm just sorry if you're offended at that. I'll tell shout out to all the retards out there. But like, uh, if, if like, if like the amount of money, I was playing poorly online and streaming Sundays, massive firing over my head to begin with. I shouldn't even be playing some of these events and I'm streaming it. It's like, I can't even beat these guys if I'm fully focused. So it's like, I had to like chill out and, and, and realize in that way. And, and just tell me like for the, for the live though, were you there? Like the classes, do you remember being there early? Did you late reg? Were you doing a lot? Like, were you focused? Like, how were you doing the kind like, give me, give me that like aspect. Did you come at on time? Or were you like late? Did it affect you with your video? Uh, having to edit it, you know, afterward. Cause it's long days. You, you yeah. finished at what midnight you got content on your phone, your YouTube. Are you shipping it off to someone to edit it? Do you do your own editing? Like how did you find time or did it take a while to like get the video out after the thing? It took happened? a while. I do my own editing at, on, on my phone at the time. Cause I had my day job, uh, still, um, working on Broadway in New York city. Yeah. Um, and so I would edit on my phone in, in, in the cash register. I worked in the box office while sitting at work a lot. Uh, it took me, um, a while to get them out because I came back from Vegas and had a whole week of vlogs and stuff like Doug Polk snubbing me and then like meeting Andrew Nimi and all these other we played the tag team event me and two of my friends in cash and it's their only hand and mob thing still it was that was that was really fun though um and then so yeah I just started editing it after so no I was I was late 
like irresponsibly like cutting it close for days two and three. And even the final table, I was like later than I think I should have been, but play hadn't started yet. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. I just, it, to me, it's just, I think that's the biggest thing. It's like, if you have a team, like you sounds like you had some help along the way with some people filming and doing stuff. You know, it's important because it really is just like Twitch, just like streaming YouTube. There's a lot that goes into it. You know, I think people don't fully appreciate that. And that's, that's not, you know, just what it is. No. But yeah. Yeah. A lot of time. Like, you know, even the Andrew Nimi, you know, these guys, they do, you do, you say you're doing your own stuff that the editing alone, that's like full days or hours and hours and clipping and build, going through it and piecing it together and finding music and you know what works. And that's, it just takes a lot of time and it's a, uh, it's a bit, bit distracting. We're kind of I'm bouncing over a bit. I want to do cover, go through that w, the, the win though. So the, the WSOP now win, you've already had this big score. You got your stuff built up. Were you feeling pressure? Like, holy, at what point did you were like, wow, like, dude, this is crazy. Like if imagine winning, I mean, this is historic. Right. This is like a second or third is great money, but it's not the same. Like you winning, winning is like it's hard. And to actually win in the fact of a story in your, you know, that picture is it's iconic. I mean, this is like honestly, it's gonna go down. Um, you you winning a bracelet while <laughs> playing with your dashboard in a parking lot, it's all time great, like greatness. People will talk about this in 10 years. Uh, it's just, a, it's just, a, it's just true. It will like, there, this is something no one's going to forget. And it's, it's like, I mean, the WSOP can't luck box any harder, right. To get this yeah. kind of promotion. They got, I'm sure their mobile sales and tablet, you know, people are playing and, and think they can do the DePaulo and yeah, you know, it goes up, but like what, and your, your reaction when you won was priceless. I mean, you got out of the car and you're yelling around, like, I forget what you said, like, I'm the, I'm the, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, it's all time. It's literally the funniest thing like ever. Like it just like thinking of someone like passing by or seeing this guy, like they must think you are so crazy. It's like COVID. Like I was like, there's like, oh, there's goes another one. Right. Like, yeah. Like, 7 a.m. Like, in New I'm Jersey parking lot. Car, you know, you're peeing on brakes outside and whatever. I mean, did, were you worried at some point you could get like arrested or like someone's going to see you? I mean, cause you, you literally going into the bathroom outside of the car or did you? No, I was going in the car, but it was a cop sweat. Also the two things I were afraid of that, um, I don't even know the law. If you're allowed to like pee in your own car, is it like if if no one can see your dick, is it is it indecent exposure? I don't know or not. So I was nervous about that. You Do you know about Antonio Espandiari's situation, right? I mean, it's one of my my. No, you know, I don't know. Oh man, I hate to even bring this up because this is like bad luck <laughs> for him, and he's one of my my. Closest <laughs> no, I'm now I'm interested very much. Yeah, no, you could just go. You could just hit it in the in the search. It'll come up. But he got bro. He got disqualified. From the PCA main event because he urinated at the table under a towel. Uh, I honestly I feel bad even bringing it up because it was like one of those things you just kind of want to bury. But he he had a bet with Bill. He had to do squ uh, lunges to use the restroom for a day, and it was like day three or four of the tournament. And um, he was doing it on the break because he 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 didn't want to go to the you know he didn't want to actually have to he had to lunge from the cove. I don't know if you've been to the PCA. Oh, yeah, I, I well, I've been to the Atlantis forever. So he had to lunge. From, from the cove to the to the thing i mean he could take the shuttle but still <laughs> so then on the brakes he was so, so tired that he was just like not leaving his chair because like to go to the bathroom got like 10 minutes or whatever and like he had his you know people bring him food he was just there hanging out and a dealer like noticed it or something happened and like so like whatever like because something weird was going on he wasn't leaving because they say you got to leave and he wasn't leaving and then he would like go and so and they and they ended up, they ended up kicking him out and he blinded out i think they either got forfeited or blinded out i don't even think he got the cash and uh it was he was in the money and it was yo a that's horrible him, and he won the bet i think he actually donated to charity because it was just like such a mess of an event but he had like a 50k bet on the, this thing and then he ended up losing getting blinded out of the, the tournament. This must've been like the last PCA time that they had one, maybe 17 or 18 this happened, but yeah. So, okay. That's all. Yeah. Anyway, that, that, but, uh, that was, uh, so we, oh, for sure, there's some rules you could get in trouble. You don't want to go to jail. You don't want to get blinded out of the tournament. Can you imagine that? Like the police officer knocks on your window and they're that's like, you know, and then you just like, you're just effed. Like that would be no ultimate bad beat, but it I happen. knew they were coming and I did talk about this in the vlog or whatever i documented a little bit but i was like constantly like i'm so scared they're gonna come not not only when i'm peeing but when i'm in a big hand like they come knock on the window and it's like oh hold on officer i have ace king just like i just got three bad give me one second and so, but luckily the interaction with the cops was just like quick like they finally came to the window at like 4 a.m and as soon as they got out i just rolled the window down i was like hey i've been waiting for you guys i'm you know playing a world series of poker event and they're like all right just win i'm like all right thanks and then asked them i was like can I film you real quick for my vlog? They're like, you mean you mean pictures? <laughs> well, moving moving pictures, but anyway, yeah. Uh, 
the nuts for peeing in the car is a Gatorade bottle, um, obviously, because um, you can like fit that if you have sweatpants into your into your pants and then easily right. guide in. I assume unless you're a porn star. Um, that then the not easy one is Poland spring bottle. Obviously, you can't fit your dick in. I assume if you can, whatever. But you have to aim it. Then you need to look at where you're aiming. Um, I've not looked and just thought I could feel and then pulled out a bottle with this much pee in it and then realized it's all over me and other times in my life. Uh, true story. But um, this, yeah, there was a pee sweat. There was food. Like I, I only got food once, um, you know, Burger King. Then I, I ate McDonald's also uh, the morning before my Colossus final table because my girlfriend wanted it. And, and in a mocking way, when I was like, I should have better food before playing. She's like, oh, what is this? Like a test? Like eat a good meal. I was like, yeah, it's, it is. It's like very mentally draining. Yeah. But wow. I don't so, even know where we were, dude. I'm sorry. I'm I, place, no, just, it's fascinating. It really is. It's all time. It's just fascinating. And and tell me about like the power situation and battery stuff. So you got like a, a external charger you're plugging in. Was that ever any problems or like battery stuff? Or you just, I mean, you had the car so you could plug in or like, cause I, the plugging in a laptop in a car, you need like a adapter, electrical thing, or what was that? Yeah, I went and bought a thing that day. Actually, I was at my girlfriend's parents' house, and then I like took a quick trip to Best Buy or whatever to get uh to the uh cigarette ch charger to two regular plugs port or whatever. So that 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 was fine. I had power. Um, the bigger thing was that the my hotspot on my phone. I don't know. I had just activated it, and and I didn't realize how poor the connection was. Right. Um, so it was super slow. So that that was the bigger issue that I found when I got there, obviously, was being on a Wi-Fi that kicks me off every hour. And then three handed was it was even the, the worst part of any of the like technological issues was uh, the thing. I wasn't letting me re get on. I don't know if it was like the, the more Wi-Fi reset for the entire 24 hours for a little bit or something, but three handed for like three handed and maybe one or two hands heads up. I don't remember because I couldn't document it because I had to play on my phone, but I got booted off, switched to the phone like I was doing once every hour and it wasn't reloading, but the app glitched. It, it literally thought I was playing limit poker for like 12 hands or something, three handed. I could not jam. I, I could only min raise wow. at, or min click three bet. I was having a mental breakdown. Like that was the moment where I was like, yo, this is where I get my comeuppance for playing in a parking lot. Right. What happened? What was that about? Do you even know? Like, what I, I have no how idea. Did how did it fix? It just, it just like clicked off all of a sudden you could do it or did you have to like sign out and get back in? The laptop just ended up working. Uh, the phone never f like fixed. So I was like, while I'm switched to the phone, while I'd need to reboot on the laptop, the reconnect to the Wi-Fi, I just kept doing it while scre screaming like, like, a uh, like me at seven years old told I can't go get Pokemon cards. What like the worst, like most, uh, I don't know, like base level, just like, oh, no, like, like so, so terrified. Um, and then finally the laptop got to reconnect. So I just was able to. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Like, this is the, uh, yeah, this is like the vlog kind of with Tommy. If you see, like drove over to the Blasio, I literally pick him up, uh, at valet. I just, it just the only, like I said, it's uh, and then he's literally, that's how he won his, that's so sick. His cell phone is, it's, it's amazing. And your app sucks too on the phone. It's not really good. Like it's cool that you can play on the phone, but it's not good. Yeah. Which one, which is your, so which, if people want to go watch your YouTube videos, uh, you have one on your, your home screen. Is that the main, is this the one or is it? What's oh one crap. The I need to change that. Go, no, go to videos. This is horrible. Who laid out this channel? Me screaming. If you go up, uh, that like the, this second row all the way to the left 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 that this one yeah this is the this is you winning the bracelet and the yeah card. yeah yeah um yeah it's pretty 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 amazing i, I gotta i i'd say it's, i gotta see it i because you know the thing is like doing content podcast streaming it's one of those things i don't really uh you don't really like watch a lot of other stuff just because you don't have a ton of time but i mean this is one of the ones i'm just i gotta i gotta do it i gotta see it i gotta it's see also it. less interesting like i don't know if you find this but uh, like a lot of the value in i think a lot of the poker content is being able to like somewhat live vicariously through people um who are like you know watching daniel Negreanu play in like a 10k seven game mix that i can't play ever uh that's not wow. there if you're able to play yourself. I know we're, you know, also being busy, but 
for sure. Do you I find that's too. why you don't I'm, watch I'm a lot? Excellent. Look at this lead you had. I mean, what happened here? You just went crazy. I mean, you had three three times second with six left. I mean, that is that is a nice spot right there. You just what were we just what was going on? Did you just go animal style? Did was there any was there like a massive cooler? I mean, to get twenty to have this big a lead, there must have been a massive pot uh, t- down the stretch. Was it a flip? Did you get cooler? Someone? Did you make a good call? What was like your? How did you get all your chips at the end? I mean, this is a huge lead. Yeah, I entered the final table with the chip lead. Even even since like the final twenty seven, I think with like there was one big suck out I had for like with like maybe fifty people left. But but past that, starting around 36 people left i think i just like went ham ignoring icm and it happened to work this day right where this hand is crazy too look at this pause this because this was winning with jack high um on you know he called off on the flop with, with an up and down um at a final table i mean i, I wow like, wow what a, what a hand you win that how big a pot was that uh, dude huge and and a ladder for everybody like that was so sick that hand Wow. I think I check raise, or I mean, not check raise. Um, he he, I don't remember. I I, I might have just jammed flop. Um, and he Dude, called. You can't. You are so, you're so st- <laughs> savage, savage hand. That's like all time shit too. Like that just never happens, you know. Like that, that you have I, to be it, good and jack high holds even like you know, the I, hold. Like he still got like a ton of outs. I mean, it's so crazy. That's that's amazing. Wow. For real, I know you get called there, and you're like, "I'm never winning." I've, it's like, oh, the, rest in peace, those chips, and then you win with Jack High. Yeah, but before that, I think a lot of hands that um, I wish I knew how to like access the hand history on WSOP.com better. To I mean, I, I documented as many as I could remember, but I think because I was in the car and alone and not streaming, and nobody was like texting me because it's like 4 a.m. I mean, some friends were aware, like we're up, but it was super late. Um, and I know people watch the channel were aware they were sweating me in this Dave Tuckman and stream and Jeff, um, Platts on, on Twitch or whatever, but like, it, I, I didn't feel the pressure. Like, like even a hundred K with 27 people left on ACR, I'll feel much more that the wanting to knit up and over think that there's ICM than when there's not yet as much on all this crap. And in this, I was just like, I, I don't know for what, maybe being in a car, I was like, yo, if I bust, I'll go home. <laughs> Yo, the fact, I mean, dude, the guys outside, people are in their day, they got masks on, and you're yelling with the, I mean, this is honestly, it's literally the best clip, I, probably the best moment in poker I've seen in the decade, like, it's gotta be up there, it's it's honestly make-believe, man, it's it's too good, it's really, you you should do a podcast every day, like, you should, they should, ro- you should just rotate around and start your day talking about winning a bracelet from your car, it's all time, it's all time, like, we could spend the whole show on it, but I do want to, I do want to chat about a lot of other stuff, and, and a, a big, big congrats, and, and man, what a, what a, what a epic, epic story, so yeah, that's one you'll just never be able to, they can't take it away from you, that's something no matter what happens, yo, I know, that, that's the biggest, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Oh, this. You'll, you'll play this. You'll, you'll have this. This is, this is gold, man. Very cool. Um, all right. So let's talk quickly about your game because I've pulled you up on Twitch. I have seen clips. I have seen, you know, I've seen you deep in a lot of tournaments with a lot of chips. So I guess your, your style, I would guess is, you know, you go for it, right? You like to play big pots. You like to get chip leads and that, you know, it's a good way to play tournaments. Is that, is that fair to say, would you say you're more aggressive uh, in your, in your style, give me, give me like a breakdown on what your game is. Uh, yeah, and how you play. yeah, I think too aggressive. So, well, the, before this last three years getting into poker, I sort of was like casually not in it and only taking it seriously, like in the last two years or whatever. But, uh, I thought that it was like solved much more than it is. And, uh, basically what I'm trying to get at is that like exploiting people is, is what, is by far the most fun part of poker for me. And the most gangster way to do that is to get people to fold. I way overly tend to go for it, but I would say, yeah, generally, yeah, I'm, I'm an aggro fish. All right. And and I, okay. So this is a, I do gotta, I have to ask, what is your school of study? Because look, you definitely know how to win. It's not easy to win tournaments. Like you can say, you can joke around, say you're fish, this and that, which is obviously not true. You, you are a competent, capable winning player and a fun one because guys that, you know, can be good at poker and min cash or get deep a lot. They just can't win. Like what you, you can win. You've proved it. You've shown it even just with some of your, your uh, documented results in, in a short period of time. So 
what, what is your, who, what, what, what clicked for you? What changed? Did you, was it a study program? Was it advice someone gave you? Was it plugging a leak in your game? What is, what do you think is like your, you know, what is your like sort of uh, core? What's your core principles in learning poker? Like where do you study and, and improve? I, I don't even know how to answer that, but I think I got a good like hybrid of the two where first uh, of, of, of two different like philosophies sort of where I like met this guy, Chris, um, and he started working with me and teaching me a lot about just a lot about everything, you know, taught me how to run Sims, how to, how to study some stuff and about ICM being okay, aware. So you are doing some Sim work and can ranges and you're working on like the fundamentals of that way. Not just like, you know, learning about position and bet sizings. You're doing some, some deep kind of work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, my bluffs, a lot of times when I'm streaming, I may be like tongue in cheek giving analysis because, um, my first, because because Chris, when he started working with me, was like, "Look, I'll, I'll you know, I'm I'll help you, but you you can't say a lot of these things out loud that I'm going to be working with you on because it's taken me and the people I work with, you know, him and his study group of friends of poker, or whatever his horses, a lot of hours of work to to like you know work this stuff out, or they've like, uh, and and I understood, you know, we're playing a zero sum game, so there are times that I am." overly or maybe maybe i'm tongue-in-cheek just saying like hey, i'm gonna punt here but i have better reasons for it than like i let on or whatever so yeah i mean I, i'm i run some sims not a ton i don't study as much as i should i don't think many poker players study as much as they should because it's easier to default to clicking buttons um well it's also you know i think it's tricky too because at some point you know you uh, i do want to talk about you have a, a fiance i believe not married yet but a fiance right yeah you have, so you got you got that which is you know, I'm, I'm married and I have a child. I, it just gets, time is, becomes increasingly more precious and hard to find. So it's like, at some point, if you're doing content, if you have a family or a significant other, uh, time to study, play, spend time with family, make content. There's only so much time and it gets, it gets increasingly difficult where it's like, all right, I want to play. I want to be able to make content, but then where do I find time to study? Where do I time f find time for that? So it's like your pie gets less and less. And, and yeah, I think you're right. I think a lot of poker players fundamentally just rather play, uh, which makes sense than, than do the work. We're really doing some extra studying can really pay a lot of dividends. Um, but it is, it's, it's hard, right? Like, especially you, know, you got, you got stuff with ACR. Yeah. You, you've got stuff with, uh, with, with everything else you're doing. And, and, and there is only so much time. So how do you find time to balance that? Where do you, where do you, do well, by outsourcing it. it? Yeah. Basically by having coaches, sorry to interrupt you, but like, yeah. So after Chris, just like Rob, uh, Kuhn, who also won a bracelet and is running elite poker coaching.com, um, right. or is the founder of it or whatever he, he coached me then after, um, Chris and, he was reverse. Like he, he's like the Alex Jones of ICM sort of. And he's just like, there's no such thing. And so, but, but basically like anything, if you don't have enough time, you need to figure out where to save time. Like, you know, editing, I like got someone to help me and, and, and studying. I know I need to put more hours studying, but I don't have the time. Exactly. Like you're saying, I can, there are people who will interpret all this data for you and help explain it to you. Um, right. Yeah, uh, no, it's uh, we're on the same page. I agree completely. Um, okay, and then what about family? What do they think? What does your your fiance think? What do your parents think? What what do they think about you and what you're doing? Like now that you kind of have, well, you won a bracelet, you final tabled the the, the WSOP event, you've got a successful YouTube channel, you got a deal with ACR, so they must feel it's it's different. How do they feel like five years ago, three years ago, when you were like, all right, I'm kind of moving out of my job? I think you said you were working on Broadway box office um stuff right you were there for a while and then kind of doing youtube at the same time like what would what do they think when you were so sort of like i hey, i'm no longer have a pain job and i am getting into poker slash content what was their reaction yeah um the only the i i, I, I would like to say like like carmelo anthony how he'll like uh, he would have a good game with the knicks or something and be like yeah to all the haters and we'd be like yo nobody hated you you're the third overall pick like shut up you don't have haters I, I liked it. Be, I, it'd be more fun in my head if I'm like, yo, nobody believed in me. But they were yeah. both like my girlfriend and, and my dad um, were sort of I mean, it was a bit much at the time where I was like laid off from because in between shows on Broadway, you work for a theater more or less. And then you look can look for work at other theaters. I knew I was going to be off for like four months and I had like 3000 subscribers. And I was like, I'm just going to like focus on making videos and poker and stuff. And she was sort of like, oh, OK. 
and then she'd be going to work at an ER as a nurse. And I'm like, like writing out a horrible rap for a bit in one of my videos. Uh, so it was a little bit, but yeah, I think that my aunt only, only now she's been so worried the entire, my entire life about gambling and stuff that she couldn't even check out the YouTube channel. Cause she was so nervous about it until just like two weeks ago. She's like, I finally watched one of your videos are pretty good. <laughs> like, and I'm her only nephew. Like we're, we're very close. And it was just very funny that she, uh, that's awesome. She's she so she's, but check it. she's coming around. Yeah. She's coming around. I also didn't really care what people thought. Like I was just like, you know what? I want to make videos. I'm committed, uh, like more to that than poker and then poker evolved through it. You know, it wasn't like the leap that a lot of people, in poker make where they're like, I'm quitting my job. I'm just going to play poker. Like I had the plan and still think of it this way that I want to create videos. I don't, I don't do what, what I say in my brain. These are my like orders of wish, but poker uh, takes a lot of time and they're one and the same for me and the content I'm creating now. So, um, yeah. And, and, and tell me, tell me about your spot, what that means sponsorship with ACR. Cause I actually, I've been to the cage, five times, I think five or six. So I was going from the beginning. I know one, I know Phil for a long time. Uh, and I, I really like the guys a lot and I, and I respect what they're doing. I think it's good for poker. And obviously in the U S there's not a ton of options, right? So like the fact that America's accessible, America's card room, um, they have big guarantees. They just had a really big venom again. I actually have two friends, good friends that won the venom for first place for a million each, uh, plus. And, and I know people, I've had a good scores on there. I've always had no problem getting paid, no, no issues. And I, I, I support what they do. And I, they, there's a lot of press in the media and you hear, you know, Joey, other guys kind of coming at them and there's some, some issues, but overall, I mean, my experience with ACR is very, very good. And I go down, I support their events and I, I've enjoyed being down there and, and spending time and getting to know those guys. And I know they genuinely love poker. So, you know, tell me a bit about your, how did you get hooked up with them and, and what's your experience with them? Yeah, they, they've been great. They're ultimately what's allowed me to like w without them, I wouldn't be able to not go back to work. It's like them plus YouTube money, plus a little bit of Twitch, plus whatever I or make from poker. But right. th they've been awesome. Um, my relationship with them started a while ago, like through I reached out to Jeff Boski, who had more subscribers than me at the time. I've since lapped him. But uh, he, uh, he he like was I, I don't know. I got in touch with him and then they were like, oh, we want to send you to a live cage. And then we just started slowly building a relationship like that. But I was like, oh my God, this is so amazing that my YouTube, even, even if I like never made if my YouTube channel got deleted, then I was like, I just got a $5,000 entry to a game because of my vlog, right? Like as an influencer, like this is the coolest thing ever, ever I've made it. And then we kept working together and. Do you run that? Do you, do you shoot that 5k or do you sell a little bit, swap a little bit, parlay it? Or do you just, do you just say F it, let's, let's get, let's gun it. I had a lot more of myself than I probably should this last time. That time I sold some, but not not as much as as uh as I ought of. I'm pretty degen with, <laughs> with this stuff. Right. I think I gunned yeah. it a little more. So I was oh and two the first two, and then the third one I, I like cash for twenty one k. Like what other yeah. job do you get a bonus basically, right? If like my contract or whatever includes you know two trips or something, uh, yeah. if like what other job gives you a bonus that is like two thirds of the time, $0. And then one third of the time, like three, or three or four X or something It's different. It's definitely a different world, but that is, that's a fun one. That's a fun sweat and it's a fun opportunity. And that, that format is really, really nice how they do it. I got to give them credit. Like I said, listen, I'm team party poker. You know, I'm rocking it. I got, I got I'm party. I love it. I, I, that's what I represent, but I'm a big believer that poker is, it's important for ACR, poker stars, GG, these sites. There's got to be competition. There's got to be some collaboration. There's got to be some rules, multiple re-entries. Uh, you know, the, 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 the things got, there has to be some sort of uh, communication and, and overall better for poker. And I know Rob Young and I know Phil Nagy, those are two guys that I believe are you know, to be the, the sort of pillars and heads of these, these companies and make the decisions and that are poker players. They love poker. They believe in poker. You know, I think it's important. I think they're doing a very good job. So I, I'm a big, you know, I don't, I don't like the like labels of yeah, people, people freak out too. And people leave sites or move around. The reality is like, think about the NBA. There's 32 teams or whatever, right? What, what is there in poker? There's, there's party poker, poker stars, ACR, GG, throwing like four or five others, 888. There's not a ton of teams. So people kind of, you know, mesh around a little bit and it, it's good. I think it's good when the sites are sort of uh, congruent and, and people are talking, communicating and not trying to, trying to hurt the industry. And I, and I, I know for a fact that Phil, uh, believes in that. And he's like always trying to, you know, collaborate, communicate 
and and do stuff. So that that's cool. What what is your to the things people that say the negative things about ECR are like oh there's bots or there's this or they don't do that. Is there anything that you would say or, or what's you know overall experience in that area? Do you think that ACR uh, for anyone that has anything negative to say, what would you what would be your your kind of uh, rebuttal? I would say that look, they're keeping me safe with my mask is what oh, they're, they're worried about safety. No, uh, they uh. I'm walking around with an ad, but I don't care. I like it. Uh, in this, in Actually, your, nice. That looks pretty cool. Um, that is a pretty cool mask. Um, yeah, my niece, my future niece wants one. I'm going to give her one of them. <laughs> but uh, okay. so, uh, yeah, no. Well, so when I first started working with them, I, I asked Jeff or people th like this because I knew there was some. It's so funny. That, like, I knew there was some out there, like, idea probably from seeing the Joey videos or stuff about bots or all this. And I was like, what's yeah. the, what are these issues? And then, and then uh, Jeff. Boski explained to me, he was like, well, the way I thought of it was, is the money safe as far as I know? And he was like, yes, I have no evidence that it's never not been. And and now Ryan today, uh, I have no evidence that it's never not been, never not gotten a withdrawal, any of that. So that's number one. And Phil explained this to one of them that they're essentially a bank first. Like that's the thing they're ultimately most responsible for basically in order of like, what is their, you know, if you strip it all away, what is their base levels order of responsibility and it's yeah. like keeping the money safe right so anyway so they do that then there's no accusations of like super users or not right it was all about bot botting or not and right. then the third thing was i don't remember but but basically um i you feel confident in, in what's going on in the in the people there and you've been there and you've met them and and you feel you feel okay to endorse that, that you're you feel comfortable with the company that's the bottom line Bottom line is, yeah, even though I, I think it, I don't know if it's worth it or not or important to um, address the things more specifically, but yeah, hundred percent, I feel comfortable. I wouldn't, um, well, that's not true. I think that I could go evil. If you paid me enough money, I would endorse like something that's killing babies. Probably if you gave me like $2 million a year, this but is live. You might, we probably I'm, not, that out, I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. I think yeah. I'm joking. I don't know. But anyway, with ACR, you're saying, a, your, your point is there's a price for, for anything in, like that, that rationale, but, but I think I'm being facetious even right. when I say that, but yeah, no, for sure. I, I was going to say though, that they're like, if I didn't play myself there, if I didn't believe in it, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't right. be repping it. Yeah. But I get I, it. We're, we're on the, listen, we're on the same, same team. And I think we're, again, we, the, the, it's nice to see the poker industry, it's nice to see them recognize content, recognize people and that they want to, you know, that are trying to promote the game and do stuff for others. And it's great that you uh, were able to, you know, secure a deal and lock up and be, be, uh, cause like you said, it, it, it takes away a little bit of pressure for you to do the content, do the other things, have some st st income, play a little bit bigger maybe than you would. It, it's, uh, it, it allows you to, 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 you know, be the best version of what you want to do. And that's, that is, uh, yeah, it's great. It's great to get a deal. So, uh, tell me about Twitch. So how, what does this mean for you? We can take a look here. You looks like you've grown a pretty nice following uh, quickly. And you, how often are you streaming? And and what is uh, what's what can people expect when you when you stream on Twitch? Uh, I freestyle a good amount. I punt chips a lot. I uh, my girlfriend will come on the breaks sometimes fiance, and answer questions. What, what is it? Are you married? Fiance, oh, fiance. I just don't like that word. I feel, I, I don't okay. know why. Cause it just means super girlfriend. Like, I don't know. Fair like, enough. Okay. You're significant other. Yeah. You're better half. I get it. All right. So she, but not what about no, French motherfuck. No. Uh, yeah. Sorry if this, if now you have to tag this explicit, um, she'll come in breaks and like re overshare one time. Some, she just, people are firing off questions in the chat. Like, does Ryan eat butt? And she's like, does Ryan eat butt? Yeah. And I'm like, yo, like <laughs> she's just like answering any questions, but I don't, I don't know. I don't streaming. I've had to, I, I'm more interested in making YouTube videos than streaming, honestly. Um, and I think that I was giving up too much. No, no one's coming to my stream for really strategy. Right. And so I, I want to change my stream to being uh, more, you're asking me to sell my stream and I'm doing the opposite. I'm being like, well, I'm thinking of this behind the scenes. Like nobody cares about this stuff. Just it's a fun stream, but I haven't been streaming that much lately. Um, partially because like I was saying before Sunday, I was like giving up a bunch of EV losing focus. I'm so easily getting sucked in the chat, right? Too like chats flying through and someone will say something like as a troll and I'll just like start talking about that and get sucked in and then not notice some stuff at the table. 
how many tables do you generally play online? Let's take a Sunday session. What are you doing? What are you firing up table wise? Like six or seven. Um, I, and if I'm streaming, the most I'll ever do is maybe maybe four, but usually three. How about you? What do you do for when you're not streaming versus streaming? I mean, I, if I if I play online poker, I'm streaming. That's just like ninety nine percent. I can't remember the last time that I've just like said, all right, I'm gonna go play a session and stream because at that point, you know, I I play some other games like you know, I do some app and private games and I play, uh, I do live stuff as well where, when I can. So I, if I'm playing online, I stream and I've noticed that the tables is a real, real issue. Like you mentioned four, I think that's a good number. When I feel like when I go up to like eight or something, it's just like chaotic. I, I feel like my stream is not very inner, inner engaging. Like I just can't really, it's not realistic to play eight tables and follow a chat at all. And so like, I try to do like four and I do feel like that's sort of the magic number. Anything over four, I feel like you're sort of, uh, the stream is secondary if you want to try to focus and play well and and it's not good i think two is honestly the best number and jason somerville i don't know if, did you ever watch him like when back in the day do you remember him on twitch because he was you know he was the original yeah i know guy. he's the godfather but i did not watch him no so, like he would just one table and he would just like play one game and be super dialed in super explaining and if it's something happened he would just fire up another table you know i get that school of thought and i think that makes the most sense but it's kind of it's kind of hard too because if you play one and you just, you know, let's say you're playing a big event on a Sunday and then all of a sudden it's 4 p.m. and you lose and there's no re-entry. Re re I guess there's some other events you could still hop in, but um, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've been curious. I thought about that mentality. I think that's the best way to do it, but it's just kind of, it's hard to be on a Sunday and just not play a few good tournaments, you know? Like your, your, your stream would be so much better to one table. If you just like, fought, you would really miss nothing. You would be so dialed into the table. Right. Your exposure is a lot less. Uh, you know, event like the 5K... Uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the Venom, right. Or the, 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 uh, CPP on party or, uh, EPT on stars, like those type of events, really, those are, those are captivating and they're fun. And you really probably should one table those, but like, there's not often there's like these million or $5 million guaranteed tournaments that you get to play. So like those other Sundays, I think you kind of have to, you kind of have to balance it out. And I think that's maybe the answer, like four, just keep it at four. Cause yeah, how many, how many, how many tables do you think it, it equates to, to follow the chat? Like, do you think it's two tables, four tables? Like how many additional tables do you think that, that it's a good question? I, it depends, I guess how much you're, I don't, I know different, um, chats or go at different speeds or whatever. It depends how much you want to engage or not, but I would say at least two at, at minimum two, maybe three. Um, cause even thinking about, even if you're not interacting with the chat, just thinking about, um, or being aware in your head that you're there's a camera and microphone on you. If you're just fully focused on the hand you're in, like, you know, I can't say that normally like racial slurs, I'd yell at the computer screen if I didn't have the mic and camera on. I'm, I'm, and, and the delay, it's a bit tricky, you know, to have a delay conversation. Cause you're right. now like talk to someone, they ask you a question, you answer, they have a yeah. follow up, you miss that part of it. And now it's like, doesn't even, you know, so it's, it's just kind of tricky to, uh, to do that. And if you have a nice stream going and people are, you know, firing off questions and stuff, you, you do, you know, you don't want to offend people. I mean, it's bad when, you know, when you're missing like subscriptions, when you're missing a host, when you're missing like donations and you're in your game, that's when, you know, you're kind of, you're really just, you're not present on uh, the stream and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not good. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a give and take. It is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, tricky thing to, to calibrate. What do you enjoy more playing live vlogging or Twitch if in a vacuum, if it's you got blogging 150%, like, cause it's more creative, um, editing and the jokes I put in while editing and stuff. Um, real, real quick on the Twitch chat, I've gotten in a five minute feedback loop where I like, I've been upset about something. Then I see their responses and another follow-up question five minutes later. And then I talk about it again, think it's done. And then five minutes later, then another round of questions. It's like every five minutes I'm, yeah. I'm re-ranting about the same thing or something. But yeah, yeah. No, I, I like, I like YouTube a lot more. Um, and what about comments? What about trolls? Like people, uh, there's something in YouTube. It's a little different than Twitch and Twitch. There's moderators generally, or you got, you know, keep an eye. You can ban people. YouTube, there's a lot of negativity in general. That's something I've heard a lot of people talk about in poker. Uh, people criticize play. People say this. Does that bother you at all? Do you, how do you feel your community is overall on YouTube? Are they pretty energetic, positive or? Amazingly positive. Like I love my people and I, I don't know why. I think maybe because I'm just being genuine and maybe more vulnerable instead of presenting myself as some like 
expert or player or anything that maybe people are, are less likely to be like, oh, I need to take this guy down a notch or put him in his place or whatever motivates right. someone to make mean comments. For how obnoxious of a person I am, I would have expected, I would have bet, I would have pounded the over on like hateful comments of my YouTube channel before starting it. But it's it's been amazing and like, like really having awesome interactions with people I meet like mm -hmm. off a, off a wacky little poker vlog. But I think it's because I'm putting my real self out there, I guess it would For be. Sure. Thing. Absolutely. Do you, do you get recognized? I mean, in poker rooms in particular, like if you're walking around uh, outside, like do you have people ever come up to you on the street if it's not in a poker setting and, and how often do you kind of people stop you and either want a picture, I don't know, autograph these days, it seems like pictures. That's what people like, but what is your, your experience? Do you feel like you're, you're well known now, or at least in the poker community, like where, where did, where do you put yourself there? Yeah, I guess, I guess in the poker community, like I would say it's like 10 to one or like 15 that like one, someone recognizing me in like the city or something, which has happened maybe 10 times or something is like so cool and like very exciting and, and like worth 15 casino uh, mentions. It'd be like, you know, a comic book artist getting recognized either in the street of, of their hometown or a comic con. It's like, you know, right. DGen center casinos, but it's all super awesome. I talk That's longer me. than people want to talk to me. Maybe you could tell how long winded I am here that like, I too, man, I can't help it. I actually, I think it's my, yeah, it's a, I've tried to, uh, my, as because on Twitch, you talk for eight, 10, 12 hours straight, basically to nobody. You're just talking. <laughs> about the so like on a podcast, it's sort of hard, you know, like I find myself too. I ask like three questions in one. I talk too much and, and, you know, I, I think that's just the Twitch streamer and just sort of like the, to, to, that's it's something trying to work on, but don't worry, man. I'm, I'm the same way. I, I, I love, I love people. I love talking and, um, it, it, listen, no problem. Uh, parkour, people are talking about this. What's this parkour thing? Did you do a video on it? Are you, is that something you, you practice? Why there's a lot of parkour talk here, even live in the, in the live YouTube chat, a lot of parkour yell outs and, and people are fired up. What is that for you? I'm very, um, I'm a, I'm a serious parkourist, even though I've gained about 20 pounds in the last year. Um, and, and my knees are starting to go. Uh, it's no, you, you, um, you, you do a little bit. Have you ever done it or have you made a, video? Okay, no. you do a, a spoof? Do you have a parkour video on YouTube or something? It's or? A bit. There is one that's an entire video of parkour where it's like everyday life is a pro gambler or something. Um, I think where would it be further up? I think, uh, but it started as just a silly little bit. If you go up to everyday life as a pro, this go up, 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 up. I think I'm doing it in the thumbnail. Well, wait, go back. Sorry, sorry. What? This is one. There, that one in the yeah that. So if you click that, you could see some of the sick parkour we do. If you scrub to like three minutes in, maybe. But um, it, it, no, it's just a stupid bit making fun of the parkour. Like we didn't even really. I didn't know it was a thing in the office ever, but so I just was doing crappy little job. We were on the Atlantic city boardwalk one day and uh, saw these silly sculptures. And then I was just like, yo, this is uh, we're not really making a poker vlog this week, guys. We're doing parkour and then yelled it and jumped. And the next week in comments, people are like, where's the parkour at? And then I was like, yo, I'm a clown trying to spin plates here, get viewers. I'll do whatever the people want. So I just started doing parkour more. I just like that's crappy little that's jumps. Awesome. No, that's funny. Parkour is a real, I mean, that, that stuff's uh that's very serious that's some I mean, of it's, it's really cool but it's pretty funny easy sport to make fun of where it's just yeah. like yeah like for kids sure. jumping off stuff i don't know whatever no I'm, I'm with it i just there's definitely people it's people like it because there's a lot of parkour a lot of parkour talk uh what is what is next for you what are some goals ambitions you have uh, is it is it youtube uh videos do you want to put out a certain number of videos do you want to do like a you know weekly stuff do you want to stream more what what's important to you right now I gotta get my crap together, man. No, I don't know. I mean, I'm working on vlogs that what's next for you. You you answer and I'll and I'll not listen and think. Um uh yeah, podcasts. I'm enjoying podcasting uh and and trying to be more consistent on Twitch. It's hard with the family, with the with the son. You know, I got an 18 month old, 19 month old guy just you know nonstop and it's it it's a juggling act. So that's are you gonna have another one? Hope so. I hope so. One at a time, man. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a learning process. They're just guessing the whole way. So, you know, it's, uh, it's just kind of trying to figure this out and then, then move on. But I don't know, man, I, I, I have friends that have now two, three, four that are, you know, under five years old. And I'm just like, man, I, I don't know how that is actually possible. It just seems insane. So, um, 
seems like more plus EV to get it, get them, get them like multi tabling. Like you just get, get more kids in that age done at once. Like, uh, like yeah, if twins, you're going to if you're gonna have two, just like, yes. Yeah. It's, I agree with you, but it's also the first, the first like three, four months are just insane. Like the sleep, the learning, you're stressed. You like hope everything's okay. You know, you know, I'm going to be so anxious. I can't imagine like everything like, Oh, is that going to kill him? Is that going to, is he going to yeah, fall? Well, like, I mean, that's basically what babies they do, right? They're trying to kill themselves for the first, like, <laughs> yeah. two years. They just like everything. It's like, Oh, you know, I, my, my son's uh, favorite book is no, no Nikki. It's so good. <laughs> like, you know, just like, it's like, you know, showing you like the oven and what <laughs> not to do and what, and, it, and so like his favorite words, no, no, you know, he's I was like, no, 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 no. But it's, it's true. You got to keep your eye, uh, eyes peeled for sure. You want kids? Is that sounds like, or is that something? Yeah. Better? Yeah. Soon we're, we're, we're just debating or going back and forth between she, she's like, I'm not going to be pregnant. My wedding photos. I'm like, yeah, but it's COVID. We, we, we have a time sort of limit on kids, not a time limit on a wedding. Like, um, so we're, we're going to start soon. Assuming that I'm not shooting blanks. We're going to start soon. We're going to start trying soon. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, it's uh, it's hard, man. It's hard. Like, there's, there's really, I, I didn't understand something. I also learned in this the process was I didn't understand. Like, I, I was kind of, you know, because growing up, you're always told like, don't get a girl pregnant, wear, wear protection, right? But like, it's hard to get pregnant. Like, it's like the people that like have one night stands and like get pregnant. It's crazy to me. Like, I don't understand because like you have to really. There's like ovulation periods. There's like everything has to go right. You got to hit the upper left. Like, there's all <laughs> kinds of. Like there's like all kinds of stuff that has to go right. So like the people that don't want kids or weren't planning on it and get that one night where it happens, like every, you know, you really, it's pretty unlucky if you weren't trying. Cause like, yeah, it's so unfair. And it is, it's crazy. People who try, can't do it. Or like the woman, you know, you just don't know. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, also, you know, this is, I don't, this, this is just not to be Debbie Downer, but it's true. Like there's, I didn't understand the amount of miscarriages that happen. Like it obviously depends on age and how old the woman is and all these other factors, but it's like people, when I got, I remember when I got, where we, I found out we were pregnant, I was at a, we were in Barcelona at a thing and, 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 and my, and when I went to a coffee shop, my wife started crying and slid me the test. And I was like, you know, I'm ready to call everybody. I'm talking my friends who have kids and my parents, I'm like, get ready to rock. And, and like, and then I found out you're not supposed, like you wait, that's the reason when people wait three months or something, because like a month in or so, like there's a lot of stuff that can happen. And I didn't know that. I didn't realize that it was, I thought you got pregnant. You were in there. Like, I thought it was like good to go, like no, no sweat, but that it's like very common for uh, miscarriages and stuff. And I had no idea. I really didn't know about that. And and so there's a lot of like little things that are, uh, you kind of, you know, learn about that. But anyway, best of luck. Also, if you don't like the first batch, you know, you might want to like, you know, try again, things like this, you know? If you what first batch of what? The first kid that comes out first one or two, you want to have years left to just, you know, send them off try again five five more you're, you're uh yeah how old are you you're 33 yeah 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 no i'm and you're okay so you're at the, okay so you're ready to rock but and and, and how old is your fiance She's 30 um just all right so you got you're not you're not in the you're not rushed but you're ready you but like accounting it. for these things that like uh yeah we like whatever i'm just i'm just finna have kids uh and sure. so but you're making me remember that i gotta get in Oh no, then I remembered it's COVID. I was gonna say, but I gotta get in more trips before I have uh babies that are young. Man, but- I'll tell you what, I, I had from 21 to 27 or 8, I was roaming around just like going anywhere, anytime, next day, someone wants to do something. And then you know, I went to Burning Man, met my wife, and uh things changed really quick. Like overnight, it was like, all right, now I'm in a serious relationship after being single basically for seven years or whatever. And, 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 you know, it just, it's different. Like I, it's funny friends and people you do stuff with, you don't understand that. Like, there's a reason why single people hang out together. There's a reason why couples hang out together. There's a reason why people with children hang out together. So like your friends, you know, you may have friends now that have kids, like good friends. It's just different. Like your buddy, you're not just going getting beers all the time. You're not just like going out to a, it's like, you have to make plans. People are tired. People have to get babysitters. People have to, it's just like, it's a production uh, for the first few years with kids. And once you start saying like two, three, four, you know, like your, your friends aren't just coming over to hang out with their kids, like staying the weekend or something with two, three kids generally. So it's like you, these things you take for granted really do, um, shift and, and yeah, so yes, get it in, have fun, do your vlogs, travel, hit the cage, do all your stuff and, 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 and be ready for a shift when, when, <laughs> it's, when it's time. That's all. That's I mean, all I'm to exploit them for views in some way and other things, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, <laughs> 
what uh what what do you what do you enjoy the most about about poker content about creating stuff is it is it tell me what you like like when you make a video and you release it what is the most exciting part of that is it the process of making it is it the journey the sweat not knowing how it's going to go is it the afterwards to have it as a, a documented journal kind of to have you'll always have what, what do you like the most um yeah, I think I think I enjoy the most like having uh, making people laugh, I guess, or having a joke that people appreciate. But but like the more rewarding thing is like when someone's with me on a video, like my friends who people know from the channel, Joey the Mush um, and and my buddy Tom were both like m my good friends, my best friends and characters in my vlog or whatever. Uh, they went like them getting to see the comments and stuff or whatever. Like my girlfriend's family was like in a couple little videos or whatever. And them being like, Oh, this is super cool. Like all these people commenting on stuff. Um, but I think just people appreciating it, like me putting in effort and then it being people commenting like, Oh, I could tell you put time into this. This is good. Is, is it's cool. It's like, uh, I can't imagine the balls it takes to ever like make a movie, like how, how long and how many moving parts that you need to just be so, believing in like what it is you're doing i'm talking about this like i'm making some fancy art i'm not this like self-important or whatever but like just on on that scale where it's like i put 15 hours whatever more into making a, or editing a vlog and stuff then release it it could suck and i don't know because i'm wrapped up in it a movie you spend a year and a half on and then it's like it comes out and it's uh you know like the nun or some piece of crap right yeah it's a yeah exactly no it's a it's a it's for sure different level sweats what's Did the uh what Sorry, I don't. Oh, okay. This is your oh, show. You're asking me questions. I don't mean to to hijack. But did you do no. you aside from the non losing EV live at the table? Do you what do you prefer? Way Twitch, I assume. Twitch is just the most simple in terms of logistically. Like uh, the live tournaments are awesome. You know, I've done it for a long time. I actually really enjoy it now when I play. Like I, I it's like because I don't do as much. But you know, just just simple about hotel travel flights generally um time away and then you go to play like one two tournaments it's kind of a it's, it's a big deal it's just <laughs> tough, like, versus i can stream on twitch you have stuff set up have a routine have my family with me you know if bust it's like click a button and you're 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 with you're with your family versus like being in you know flying or bringing them because it's not really again traveling with the kid it's okay we have a nanny uh but it's a lot you got you get two hotel rooms your <laughs> multiple flights your, your baby's not in a good routine. You know, he's flying, uh, now with COVID who even knows it's just a mess anyway. Um, but you know, then the same thing, the, the baby's not getting the right normal food. They're out of the routine. They're not with their, you know, it's, it's just not really like a, uh, very conducive lifestyle to travel often with, with the family, um, like that. So I, that's all I, I'd say. Twitch is just simple, simple and, and much, much easier, but uh, I love the live. I do love playing live. Um, it's also frustrating to play live and then, you know, like bubble or come yeah. up short play two days, not cash one event or min cash and like, you know, just disappointing. Um, whereas yeah, again, online, you just have so many, you can play four five, six, 10, 20 tournaments in a day or two and, and, and not have all the other stuff. Plus it's just like automatic vlogs, right? Cause if you're streaming, you can repurpose that for highlights if it goes well. Whereas, uh, you know, live it's, uh, you may not even, you may play a full event and not have a, not have a vlog. I mean, it's just, or not a good one or not cash. So, um, tell me, tell me about your, your sort of tiff or, or situation with Doug Polk. Cause I honestly forgot about this. You mentioned it earlier. Like he, did he say something or you guys had an argument on something? I honestly have no idea. Yeah, I, I play it up for, for like content, like he does with D negs. It's so, it's sort of, I mean, I, I do think he's a, a douchebag, but what happened was I just met him at the world series my first time there and, uh, saw him. Oh yeah. I used him for a thumbnail. Like Doug Polk is a jerk or something. My right. thumbnails are crap. Like, yo, I look back at my old videos and they suck. Like, but do you, who does the editing and thumbnails? Do you do you make? Yeah, I've done thumbnails? all except for maybe like um, every thumbnail I've done, I think, uh, or I know, and then I've edited every video except for maybe the last like um, like fifteen of the last twenty or something like that of my vlogs, maybe a little less. Uh, someone's edited uh, or we've worked together, but. <laughs> There's this video. So Doug, Doug, Doug Polk just, he was just rude to me. He, snub, he had snubbed me, so to speak, as if I expect his time. But the way it happened was a little like rude. I was just like, I filmed him. He was at the other table in the tag team event. And I was like, yo, Doug, Doug, I'm coming for your spot. I'm coming for your YouTube spot. 
Um, and he's like, oh, you can't have it. Joking. Ha ha. No problem. Then when we're bagging chips at the end of the day, like we're just sitting there waiting for instructions. He wasn't in any conversation. I walk over to him and I was like, hey, man, I don't know if you know who I am at all or have seen my videos or not, but I just want to introduce myself. And, and like I said, I was maybe I was not that big. I don't know how big I was. it doesn't matter. But like um, I didn't expect him to know me or not. But, you know, I was like, yo, I don't know if you've ever seen any of my videos or not, but I just want to introduce oh, myself. Yeah. And he was like, he's like, yeah, I don't watch videos. And I was like, oh, okay, because I just wanted to, you know. And he's like, yeah, bro, yeah, I don't watch videos. And then, like, looks at somebody else at the table, like, who the fuck is this guy? And I was like, all right, we'll check him out. You'll you'll like him. And then later I tweeted, like, oh, met Nimi and Owen today. And they were nice to me on, like, fuck face polk. Um, and, like, Nimi and Owen had known who I was or whatever, because it's not a huge community or whatever. Not Again, not that I'm expecting yeah, no, or not. Course. Yeah. And, and I didn't go up to him I'm like, yo, yo, what's up? I know you've been waiting to meet me. I was, I was like, so like humble. I was like a fan of his. And he's like, yeah, I don't watch videos. Maybe I came on aggressive. I could come on aggressive. Either way, once that happened, I'm parlaying that into some thing, sort of back at him like he did with D-Negs. Um, low key, just to call him out. Right. I don't know. He seems like a douchebag. He he never hides that in his videos anyway. He he, he is, he is a faux hawk. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny because the first, uh, the first YouTube week or two of doing videos, summer 2017, I I actually, Doug kind of helped me realize all the power of YouTube because what happened was I was, I had done Twitch for a while now, but like, it's funny because actually in general, I think people recognize more for YouTube. Like, I don't know if you ever get that, like, or what you feel like it's, obviously your YouTube is actually bigger, so it makes sense. But at the time I was getting noticed and this happened with Jamie Staples as well, who told me to get on YouTube. but. I remember seeing Jamie in, in the Bahamas and some kids came up to Jamie and they were like, man, I love your stuff, man. Great to meet you. Wow. They were like enamored with him. And I was, and then like, I heard him and then he was like, oh, what's your name on Twitch? And they were like, no, we, what's Twitch? Like we watch your YouTube videos. And I was like, whoa, like that's interesting. And I've had that happen a few times where people don't know what Twitch is, but they say, see YouTube. So when I was in 2017, I had my vlog camera on the table and there was a kid there. It was like a 1500 WSOP event. And he saw me filming stuff and he came up to me and he's like, man, he was, uh, he was like, you know, the reason I'm here is for, because I seen YouTube, uh, videos and it got me back into poker. And he was like, do you know, Doug Polk? And I was like, yeah, you know, I know Doug, but then he was like, yeah, I was, I mean, he's like, I'm here. Cause I saw a video of Doug's and I was like, wow, like that's pretty crazy. Like this guy's like, I haven't played poker in years. And he was like at the world series playing because he had seen some content from Doug. And that was like, when I just started, he didn't know who I was. Um, he, he had never heard, you know, whatever he did. I just had a video camera. I was vlogging and I, had, I hadn't even started a YouTube channel. Like literally was just starting, but that was when I sort of realized the power. I was like, wow, like people are actually, it's really good for poker and people do watch And Doug's very polarizing. You know, I think people like really don't like him or they really like him and they like, you know, he makes interesting content and he does, you know, obviously he's got one of the bigger channels in, in poker and YouTube and he's a very successful cash game and, and, and he's won some tournaments. So, um, he no, just feels I, a bit toxic, dude. He's like, he's just like a douchebag. Like Brad Owen, I texted him. Well, like after he put out a video recently, and I had some questions about how like it worked out with this thing behind the scenes of his channel, and he just was like, uh, like I texted him, and then he, I was like, can you talk? Like he's just been super helpful. Like I would be to anyone. Like anyone else comes up to me, and they have at at, at any point. I I know this now, and, and I'm a YouTube creator. And somebody comes up to me when I'm not doing anything. They're not interrupting me, and they're like, "Yo, I make videos. I'm a content creator." I'd be like, "Yo, you, I I, I will help you, even yeah. if it's even if it's by not being a dick to you and being like, I don't watch videos." So, um, yeah. that, that I, get, I hear what you're saying. You know, I listen to me. I'll say this. So, Doug, when I first started on YouTube, I actually. Cause we have some mutual friends. I, he's not like in my camp, right? He's not like a guy I talk with text with. He's not one of my buddies in poker, but, um, I did a little bit of stuff with upswing. Initially, I was kind of decide between raise your edge and upswing and end up going raise your edge. But like, I, I did some promotion for them and we talked and I remember he, we got on a phone call and he basically broke down YouTube. Cause I was curious, like when I started into it, I was like, how does it work? How does, how do the numbers work? Right. How do you make money? Is it, it cause I didn't understand. I was thinking like, Oh, do you get, if you get a hundred thousand views per video, how much does that equate to i didn't really understand like what the math is and the money's not really in youtube right like right. you're not make, getting rich off youtube i think people would be surprised like it's very low but obviously if you promote products you get some deals like the reason you're getting the sponsorships the reason you get to do commentary the reason you get to do other things like this kind of translates from that but he was basically explaining and break it down so you know, to be fair he i gotta defend him a bit because 
I do hear the arguments and like, I think I'm actually probably one of the few people that's sort of neutral. Like, I think people really just don't like him or you're on his, his team and in his camp. Right. So I get what you're saying, but he did take time and sort of like break down stuff for me and, and go through some things. And we chatted and, you know, I also think, I think Doug's, uh, I think he has like a misconception about some of the poker industry and like what, what happens and just like the way he presents certain things I don't agree with. And I think he's also not always informed on like certain issues. Like I heard him like when Jamie Staples and I left poker stars, right. And, and we, it was our choice. We had a contract renewal, each of us. And we decided, you know, I made a video about this, but like, it was just funny. Cause I heard some comments about like what Doug was, was he was predicting what, uh, how much money the, the was paid like for streamers. Right. Like he made a video about like estimating how much people are getting paid. And like, he was just so far off. Like it was like, and it was like disrespectful almost, right? Like he was like, oh, like guys are making, you know, 30 or 50K, he thought like a year in contracts or something. And he just was like, not even in the right stratosphere. And like, it just kind of feels like demeaning or like the way he like presents it or says stuff. So like, yeah, I mean, I, I think he does some stuff that I don't agree with, but again, I just gotta get, I gotta give a little bit of a backing. Cause I don't, I think you can catch people on the wrong day or how they present something, or maybe, you know, Doug just gets bothered or asked too much. But like, I agree with what you're saying, like, you can kind of tell someone how they, how they handle themselves. Like, even like you're saying, if he didn't want to talk or didn't want to, whatever, he could just say, you know, Hey man, nice to meet you. Like, that's great. I wish you the best. Let me know if you have a question, you know? So I agree. Like you could, you can, you can handle it in different ways. I mean, if this wasn't a, pu if, if, if we weren't both like public or whatever, or whatever, I would like, ultimately I, I am like, Oh, whatever. It was a bad day. Like if, like, if I saw him, I, I don't care. Like, I'm not that angry. It's sort of a meme to keep it going. And yeah, then I like yeah, I about it and get re or whatever. But I mean, not, not everyone's going to be like, cool. You know, it's like every, everyone else I've met in poker has been like, um, cool. I get, it. I get your point. Like to, for sure. If you saw someone come up to you, who was like, literally you never seen them. And they were like, had a YouTube vlog and they were starting, they had four followers and they didn't, they never even upload a video or what two videos and they had whatever you would, you would, take your time and you would talk to them and be like, Hey, like, let me know. I can help. That's awesome. Good for you. I mean, that, that's how I feel too. Like I like to talk to people and I want to help. Yeah, I, wanna, I, I want like, people to encourage them to make content. But again, uh, like yeah. that, that's all fine. It, it's also the way he had like the, the, the fact that he like made the Dan Negreanu um, thumbnail in that video, that was a little too vicious. Like the blackface was in the thumbnail and stuff like that. Like yeah. that, that feels like low key trying to get someone canceled, but I guess that's his right. I don't really know, but it, it felt like a bit, too, too much at him, you know, like, um, the, the Negron speaking of the heads up match, I, I don't know your thoughts or what you think on the lines and if you bet it at all or whatever. I mean, it's obviously a pretty big, like that. This has been a few, this has been like a real dislike. And a lot of times people take it to the boxing ring, you know, for some stuff or, or, or Mark, you know, MMA, we saw Olivia Bousquet and, and, uh, which I think would be more entertaining, but the, the, this dynamic, it's funny though. They did kind of hit like buddy, buddy. I actually saw that coming. Like even on the, the live, they like basically were like bromancing, a bit. What are your thoughts on that? Like on them sort of, uh, be like this, this whole, this whole heads well, up. I think most of the hate is from one side, basically that Doug was just like going at Negranu for a while and Negranu, I'm, I'm sure he was annoyed back. Um, like, but you know, it's one person coming at the other. And, and so Negranu also seems like a more, easygoing guy willing to change his mind like he didn't you know negrano never made an entire vicious video about poke or whatever so poke is really the one sort of antagonizing who's yeah. antagonizing or dictating how much he, he's going to be but of course you know in person he's barely making eye contact like he's not like a uh a, a, a he's like a beta or something i don't really know but like he was like maybe because he's talked shit about this guy for years yeah. that that he felt uncomfortable but yeah i'm not that surprised because it's like i said like if i met doug i'd be like whatever like you know i'd like chicken out i don't even know chicken out i'd, I'd be like yo apologize to me and then we could talk but and then he wouldn't and then we'd be like whatever then i'd get over it but uh i think i, I bet on negranu by the way with jeff boski he wrecked me on odds he's a, he's a dick he only laid three to one but i was like i don't care whatever like i'm only getting three to one on negranu before it um okay well, I think a few is like whatever. What do you think? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think it's it's tricky because that that was I, I think on that odds, like I don't think heads up. The problem is twenty five thousand hands. It just yeah. it just really comes down to how much um you know work Daniel can. He's a smart guy and he knows how to play poker and he's studying heads up. So you know, I, I think it's probably 
Uh, it's probably like a decent line in the four to five to one range. It's just like Doug's a specialist at this game for so many years. And he's like been also studying uh, and brushing up. So, you know, I think I think Doug's a favorite to win. I just the odds are it's not really clear to me. And I haven't watched any of it. I just see a little bit of bits and hands, you know, a little bit of highlights. So I don't really I haven't really seen a clear uh, other way. I mean, it's just people are very polarized on this. They like again, they think Doug's like a 10 or 20 to one favorite. Or people are like, oh, at four to one, Negreanu versus anyone in the world. Like, how can you lay four to you know four? Three yeah, to yeah, that's a good point. I I don't really think about it. Again, like I'm not I'm I'm minus EV. I'm not out here like fully making like plus EV edge bets all the oh, time. Your shirt, you're, you know, bro. Listen, I mean, you're rocking the minus EV. You really you embody. You, you, what is that, by the way? Is that a brand? Is that your thing? Is yeah, that a it's like what hoodie I sell or whatever? Like in my channel, it says DJ in the back. I think you can see. Yeah. Um, but whatever, it's in Teespring in my YouTube. I, yeah. Like, I think that I don't know enough about heads up. Like I, I made, I spent a whole day making a, a video analyzing one of their hands, trolling Doug Polk's poker hands. And it got taken down by poker go, uh, for violated, but like, um, like, and I don't, I don't know if they have a clause or not. There's a lot of money. It's too like, you know, look at even they're just playing big pots and, and you know, who knows Doug, Daniel coolers them for a while. You know, at some point Daniel could just start playing small ball if he gets a lead or they get down, like, say they get down to, you know, there's like a certain amount of hands where Daniel, I don't think he would, but he could like fold out. Like say he gets the lead somehow down the stretch by a lot. Like he could just, you know, win the bet um, as well. So like, there's just a lot of kind of what ifs. I generally, my whole thesis on betting, I don't like doing, I don't like laying exposure. Like whenever yeah. someone like betting people on weight loss bets or long shot odds, like I like to be the one that that's got the big upside and, and I don't want to be exposed for like four or five, 10 to one on like stuff, you know, like those just hurt. Like you, you, you don't want to lose. You just, it's just not worth it to me to like lay, lay big odds. Although. Yeah. I think Yo, that thank God, speaking of that, thank God, Doug Polk big timed me big picture that he won't mention me or whatever, because he, he offered in way early on in Corona, um, like 10 to one or something on, on like, or I forget if he's setting the odds or not, but basically it might've been 20 to one on will the world series of poker be canceled. And I was like, that's ridiculous. I'll lay 10 K to your 500 right now. Uh, as long as I could pay you 2 K a month, cause it would be too painful. I could have the 10 K to give him at once, but luckily he, he never got back to me. He never tweeted back. Thank God. Wow. That's a, well, that's Yo, really good. Thank too. God. So you I know what? I'm really grateful to him for big timing me. Tuck, I know Dave Tuckman was asking me and trying to get money down on it. And I literally told him like, bro, this is a bad bet for you as a friend. Like you should not bet that. I don't think it's going to happen. And he was going to lay like five or six to one. I think he was trying to bet bill. And I was like, listen, as your friend, you just, you know, stand down. <laughs> like just he was trying to bet it. that it would happen or that it would. Yeah. yeah. That it would. Yeah. But I that mean, also it, feels like the nicer side to bet on that like this this like horrible thing that's happening this pandemic <laughs> will get solved and people won't die but yeah well i bet on the election and that people would say is like <laughs> life or death people are so polarized i don't what, know what just, do you think on this what's your what's your current what are you seeing for odds did you do you have a horse in it do you think like do you think this is like shenanigans trump's drawing dead or do you think that there's actually like a case here uh, do you, are you paying attention yeah, yeah, no, I'm laying odds. Some, I mean, I wish he would come back and win Georgia, which I don't think he can. I don't know, because because just for some bets I I had, I, I voted for, I wrote in my own candidate, third party. If if anyone's going to get triggered saying that I bet on Trump, but um, I bet on him to win Georgia and Texas and stuff, and, and then bet a bunch on him in the election. But I have margin of victory bets on how much the Democrats will win by, and I win back like twenty two hundred if if they were to have won Georgia, and only a little bit if I went whatever. Anyway, now. I would lay a lot of us. What do you believe though? Do you think he's like, do you think it's 5%, 10%? Do you think he's stone like 1%? Do you think he's live? Or like what? Cause I see, I just, I'll check in on his tweets and I'll look at a few of the things and the news is so crazy now. It's hard to know like what, you know, you look at CNN or Fox news or other things are just so biased and like, you know, they just, they just, but, but what is like the true odds? What do you think it is right now in your heart? Yeah, it's two, 2%. That Trump, Trump wins, that he can come, that he can come back on recounts and win. Like I think it's like a hundred percent he'll find some level of fraud everywhere, like a little bit, baby fraud, and then two percent that all of that totals up enough to win the election. <laughs> like it's a bit, it's, a, it's like the, the whole argument. We were talking about this. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things where if it's like a few states or like I'm sorry, if it was like like what happened when people got to remember two thousand Al Gore. That was a crazy situation, but it was like one very state. close one state. Also, it was George Bush's brother was the governor. And like they had like they targeted one thing. The problem is for for Trump is like he's now lost in multiple. Like he's got to he can't just go into Pennsylvania or Ohio and be like, 
like really far hammer something because he's got to attack like win two or three flips and that's that's not easy because then you start contradicting yourself on the counts and whatever and like like you said there probably was some fraud and this is like obvious at, at this type of level there's stuff that happens right whether someone dropped off or something shady and there is room for that but it's just kind of hard to go in and try to do it at every state like you're like oh let's turn arizona let's turn Nevada, let's turn georgia let's turn it like you're just now trying to I, honestly if somehow it gets flipped I can't, can you imagine the rioting? Like it would be crazy at this point. Like people, cause they already had it all boarded up and ready. If you right. want and Trump, now, won, and, Trump won yeah. fairly or whatever, regular, yeah. they were ready for riot. If, if they flipped this shit, it would be for real a civil war. I'm sure of it. I'm yeah. I wish I could have a gun here in New York city. If that happened, Oh, I have a knife on my, like on the windowsill in my <laughs> room. I'm moving out of here. I'm moving to Jersey though. As soon as this lease is up, like what, we're getting oh, a house. What? what? Let me ask you, what is going on in New York City? Because I've heard multiple things. I've heard it's like hard to get around. Traffic roads are closed. I've heard it's dangerous a bit. Like, is there any like no fundamentally COVID's changed the world in the areas and places? Of course, it's different. But what is it for you in New York City at the moment? Um, it's a little like crappier than it was. Like, well, it's not. I don't think it's as bad as maybe like the media or people around the country are hearing like when i stream people will be like oh isn't new york like on fire and it's not it's definitely sucks it's definitely not worth paying you know 3k a month to live in a shoebox when everything is closed and uh it's you know corona it's like and you're and everyone's stuck home but uh here's a good story of how things have changed yesterday a bum was walking up to me and i gave him He's like, can you help me out or whatever? The lady in front of him, like, no. And I'm like, yeah, here. And I open my wallet, give him five. And then he comes closer to me and taps me. He's like, yo, let me get one more. I was like, yo, don't touch me. I was like, I think I was like, I was like, I was like, yo, no, I gave you five dollars and don't touch me. And then he like backed up. But like, <laughs> like I was like, your 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 line is thank you. <laughs> but right. I, I, anyway, I I mean, I feel bad for him. That sucks that he's that desperate to be like, yo, yo, let me get one more. But uh, my point is. It, it feels a little sketchier. Like, you know, we right. actually got pepper spray here for my girlfriend's walk home from work. Like just, it, it feel, it feels, you know, ske sketchier, but, and what everyone's you? leaving. Everyone wants to leave because in a pandemic who, and all these people working from home, again, like I said, you don't want to pay a million dollars to live in a box. True. And what, what is uh, your, your fiance is a nurse. What's her take on COVID? Like, is it, is in, in your take overall, then I guess, is it, do you feel, uh, I don't even know how to explain. Like, I, what is your, like, not that it's real or is it like, I know it's like, that's a, just, it sucks. I was at a funeral uh, of my, my family, like a real Italian family. And you could just look and see based on who had a mask on and not like, guess what news they follow. It's funny. It's so silly that it's like, what's your take on COVID could yeah. be framed as like, it's like, well, I've been but, watching a lot of Alex Jones and I think uh, it's a hoax and that it'll be all turned around or, I think we're all dead. I don't know. I think it. She she thinks. What is she seeing at like the hospital? Like in terms of cases? bad again. She's saying now it's the second wave. Uh, at first she. It's, it's full. Like people are in there and it's jammed up and it's crazy. Uh yeah, getting there again. Um and that she's saying I was gonna go to Atlantic City next week or something for something and she's like you probably shouldn't go. Um. And now I may have it. Uh, I'll get tested later today, like we said. What, what do you think? And what's it been like? Um, like it's warmer where you live, also. So maybe those second waves are less bad. It's you know, so it depends. Like my so my family's from Ann Arbor, Michigan. You know, I get a pretty good idea of what what happened there. Uh, the different you know Vegas, Miami um, areas that I know about, and also you know Bahamas. Like it it's sort of people seem to just sort of say whatever. Like it's kind of, I know in Michigan it's gotten really bad and they're like closing stuff down, but overall I just think yeah, people are sort of like, it's to a point where the, the shock effect has worn off. Right. People are, people are kind of like, all right, like this is a thing, but the death rates lower and like, we got to live our lives. And it depends on your age, like our age, you know, am I, I'm not that concerned. I don't want to get it. I want to not give it to other people if I did get it. And I want to be respectful, but you know, I'm not like, on pins and needles about it. So I, I kind of feel like, uh, and the vaccine, I guess they're saying 95% accurate, maybe that's basically around the corner, which looks very promising. Um, so the yeah. network combo is like people being shut down, like businesses being shut down and people are still at risk. Uh, you know, like yeah, no, where it's, it's a big deal. There's big, it's a lot of impact. A lot of yeah. People are, it's like the, the, in the city restaurants were not allowed to be open, but everyone was just hanging out in central park anyway. And it's like, that's the worst of both worlds where you're trying to like, 
do this stuff and and like regulate so people don't spread it and yet they're still taking that risk while businesses are just like dying that's like the worst combo the best would be like in theory businesses can fully operate and people aren't at risk right where it's like if in a magical world every brick and mortar business could snap their fingers and be perfectly online like dude we're this this is in my house, the biggest travesty of this all, despite my girlfriend, fiance, seeing uh, people dying at work, is that her wedding is going to be delayed. So that, that that's the biggest travesty of all of this. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm totally fucking around. Yeah, it's, I mean, dude, it, it's uh, it's it's just un, it's uncharted territory. We don't. We hopefully we never deal with this again. Hopefully it gets resolved and you know quickly. But it's uh, it's just it's just like kind of a it's just kind of it's like a one outer, right? It's less than that. Like hopefully in a lifetime you'd see this not happen, anything like this. But you know, in a way, it's kind of crazy if you think about it, because this is like a you know the movie. Have you seen Contagion? Did you yeah. ever see that? So yeah, you know, similar, right? Similar kind of scary and like widespread and you know that kind of thought. But like you know, and China's like, fault. Well, yeah, so it's it's crazy and it's sort of like it's it's wild to think like imagine that it was reversed, like it didn't affect the old people as much and, and they had to be worried, but you're like babies had to be worried or young people, you know, like not saying it's better or worse, but it's just like different. Imagine it was a mutation or what if it's not, you know, a small percentage, what if it was eight percent of people were just like getting, you know, clipped out? Like it's it's scary and it's bad, but it could definitely be. You know, there's there, there's other outcomes that are worse. I yeah, think Ebola, it, I thought it was going to be the end of the world when that was happening in Africa. Remember, and then yeah, they were like yeah, there's SARS as well, and these type of things. It's like where they, you know, every once in a while there's sort of this like really crazy deal, and it, it puts things in perspective. And it's uh, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely scary. Well, I do want to I want to take. There's a lot of questions. We've got literally. All um, right, I what, promise I'll be. I will give the most concise answers I've ever given on any show in my life. Wow. You're going to, that's, that's a, uh, that's a strong statement. I like it. You said you were, you, like I said, you said you didn't told me at the beginning, you might have COVID man. So again, appreciate you sort of uh, you manning up here. We had microphone issues to start. I was a little behind, so we did get it off the ground uh, and we're here guys. And we're going to take as many questions as you can. Plus you got a ticket that is going to give uh, a retweet here. If you guys want to ask a question, you'll be eligible for that. So you guys can go over to my pin tweet or uh, Ryan's Twitter. And, and he has that as well. You put out there. Um, okay. So here we go. Some of these we may have to skip or we've done already. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. We'll just, just hit this again. Uh, when you packed the car to head to New Jersey, uh, was, was a skateboard a last minute thing or did you know along you were going to bring it? Uh, it had been in there, uh, for people who don't know what the question is. It, I put, had a skateboard in the car and played skate at some point during it, but it had been in the car. Cause I was like skateboarding random other trips to Jersey. Okay. Uh, COVID-19, what do you think the impact's going to be on the poker community moving forward from Cle Craig Leonard? Do you think this is going to, um, for online and live, how, what's your sort of prediction? Let's take 2021. I think, uh, 2021 will still be seven handed or maybe eight handed dividers live. Um, I hope there is a live world series of poker and online will stay gangster as it's been. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. What about the name of the store? Do you remember the store of the, at the parking lot? I wish you won the bracelet. Does that, does that stand out to you? The, the actual store you're in front of? Well, everyone, it says whole foods cause that's where the picture was, but there was a massage envy nearby and a Chipotle. I would have picked a, a funnier store than whole foods if I knew that I'd win and it'd become a story. Right. Well, what, what about, I mean, when you, uh, actually, I want to ask you about the car ride home. What was that like? Did you park for a while, call people, or did you just like, the second was over? What, it was 6 a.m., 7 a.m.? Yeah, yeah, like 6 I just sat in the car for a little bit, just like in shock. People were texting me, and then I was just like, like, I just sat there enjoying it for a bit, then then drove home to the city, and then had to look for parking for a while. Uh, my girlfriend was still asleep. It, it, it was just, it was how, yeah, tell me about that. How was that interaction? Because, you know, like a lot of times uh, yeah, you, you wake up and it's just like another day, another tournament. She probably did like maybe a little weird. You weren't home. Did she text you? Did she know you had won or was she at, completely asleep when you came back? Completely asleep. She knew I was deep like when she went to bed or something or had seen my text maybe at some point. She later said like 2 a.m. And I was like, oh, going well, still here. Uh, but no, I woke her up, like came in and was like, hey, I, I, yo, I won. And she's like, oh, great. And then, and then like five minutes later when she got up, she's like, Oh my God, like on Twitter and all excited. And then like fully awake. But at first right. it was just like another tournament result that I'm waking her up with like, Hey, Oh yeah, I got so-and-so for such money. She didn't right. like realize that I won one. 
So cool. And what did you do? Did, were you so amped up? Were you like in bed texting and calling people for like hours or did you just like conk out and then wait? You know, I was so amped up. We had plans to go like to this lake in, in Jersey also and hang out for the day. And she wanted to go to Marshall's or something while I had the car. So I was like, yo, let's just stay up. Go now while I have this adrenaline. I was up to like 5 p.m., slept for two hours and then decided last minute. Uh, or actually, I couldn't get money back on my WSOP.com account because they hadn't put in the 159K and I was maxed out on a deposit method. So I slept for two hours, figured out a way with some both BS pay plus setup, got money and then drove out and played the next night event at a friend's Airbnb. Not at your same location that you should. Not at the same parking lot, which may have been a mistake, but I made two deep runs the two following nights at, at a friend's Airbnb and then a hotel. And uh, so I had like cash like three days in a row. Uh, with two so big you're not superstitious like you're not you, you're not going to be driving back to that spot again or you might try it one more time just for laughs or is that like a not not a deal you do i did actually it, there's so few f clips of it that i have like filmed like maybe a mini vlog but it, i ended up busting so quick that i uh, never even done anything with the footage i went back for one of the world series of poker events and um right. punted Okay, fair enough. Well, yeah, it's probably for the best. You don't want to be like driving to that spot. Every I know. Day. Yeah, imagine I was yeah. that superstitious that I had to play there forever. That would suck. That'd be tough, right? You'd really have to be ripping them off there and winning it to to keep going. Uh, did you ever want to quit poker in the past? What? Well, give me like some hardship. Was there ever like a period where you were just like, man, like I want to do the content, but this is such a grind. I'm not going to do it. Or were you just like all in all the time? Um, no. In in quarantine basically um i was like every like when it first started everyone everyone good was winning and i was like losing online uh over firing and stuff and not not really wanting to quit but i was just like i'm too degen for this like i can't sustain this like because i was just entering things i shouldn't be entering you know not really having any efficient bankroll management which I'm much better at now. And also I wasn't studying enough, but no, it's been basically, I've been with it all the time. Ne never thinking of stopping making content or anything. For sure. What's your favorite WSOP moment besides the one of the, of the bracelet? Was, was it the live one then? The, uh, uh, yeah, one? but really the most fun was the tag team event with my two friends who, who are, who are not as good as me and, and the sweat of whether or not my, my friend, Joey, who's a mush, he's very unlucky. Um, he swore before that, that he had never won a live flip in a tournament in his life. And he thinks he, he's, he thinks he runs so bad. Like he's the prototypical, like victim, bad beat guy, but we had to just trust him day one of the tag team event, uh, you know, to, to, to not punt our stack. And anyway, cashing that for the three of us for their, all three of our first, uh, world series of poker cash actually, uh, was super fun. That's very cool. Tell me a little bit. I know he's a big part of your, your show and your dialogue, Joey the Mush. Who is he and what is what's his what's the deal with them as this longtime friend yeah um long time well r relatively like i've known him maybe like eight years uh eight years about and he's just um yeah bad beat guy victim he, he 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 goes a little crazy he's um he he's unlucky <laughs> but he also thinks he's more unlucky than he is it's like a feedback loop uh basically of that's kind of um, tough. Like, I, I, yeah, I guess like, you know, I, I think if you're going to kind of go and play off that, like, it, like the, the Phil Helmy positivity makes more sense. Like if you're going to say you're just really lucky, if you say you're really unlucky all the time, it seems kind of like a tough way to tough way to operate, you know, like right. I, unless it's just totally a joke and fun. But if you're like legit, like wake up every day and are worried about getting hit by a, a double decker, um, that's got to be tough. But I, I mean, see, I'm sure he's a nice guy and it, it's sort of an act too, right? It's sort of fun. It's, but well, know, I, I like call him out. It, like in this vlog I'm editing now, we went to Maryland Live like a couple weeks ago and, and like he's genuinely being correct. Like he's like, like he's recapping losing all this money in the weekend and he's like, you know, it's the same stuff that I, I run it twice when I'm ahead and then I lose the second one. Then when I'm ahead, uh, they don't want to run it twice. I lose. They're hitting gut shots on me. Like this is a real, a true recap. And then when he, the few times he ever maybe tries to play it up, I'll just call him out. Like he's, he's really himself. Well, he, he really gets like that. It's uh our, our entire group chat would just be him sending screenshots of like bad beats. Like I'm sure they're very highly curated for not all the, <laughs> the ones that he was behind. Right. I, I get it. Makes not, it's, I mean, Hey, listen, it's, it's a, uh... It's all mental. You know, that's, he's going to win the main event though, probably, right? Next year or something. And he can never complain again. 
the uh the main event online are you gonna play this you see this 10k now that's i mean that's in jersey right yeah, okay. you, can- you are you gonna i'm gonna play yeah i'm making plans i don't know wh- where what what parking I mean, lot in jersey actually or something for that or, or nevada i don't know like i'm trying to figure it out because they have the one online too that's eligible outside of the country but um it's kind of weird you can play both i guess or maybe yeah i don't like, think you can play both you can but no, i think well, how i read it and interpreted was there was the new jersey nevada for a few dates and then there was that then so that's that's the one in vegas that would be at the rio right. but then they have a international one that goes to the king's casino right and you go there play live so you could i thought both. you could play one or the other uh i thought but maybe i'm wrong I, it's because they're two separate events it's wsop europe and wsop I think but on maybe the other there, one clarify that. Um, but yeah, I think you can do either or I'm, I'm sorry. I think you can do both if you wanted, uh, people ask about nervous about losing the internet. We talked about that. What's your favorite site to play on America's card room. Okay. That was a uh, Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, poker movies, any movies you like rounders, any other ones? Uh, no, not really. Do you like rounders though? Did you watch? Yeah. 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 I like it um neck uh what was your what was do you think the most significant win like besides the two big scores the 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 bracelet in the third is there any other score in your career something else that like maybe you would have not played if you hadn't uh cashed or was there like an early on tournament that was significant for you and yeah that 8k the i have this borgata trophy back here um from that it was only i finished third what we chopped and then we flipped for the trophy but um that was just super exciting and fun. And that was my biggest score. And, and, uh, also like I had thought for a while, I was like, not crap fully at tournaments. I was playing an underground one in New York city for a while when I had like no money, like $60 every Sunday, um, a freeze out in an underground club playing for 1100 and stuff. And I like, was like, Oh, I, you know, I don't think I'm that trash at this. Um, but obviously my, my family at the time or whatever was like i don't get it you just lose most of the time i was like well this is tournament <laughs> you know but whatever and then it's like you get a big gish score and and it feels like sort of validating and motivating so that, that that was that got that got people on board where you could at least it kept you in the game where you people aren't like this discrediting you or your family was like all right like you can keep going and a little bit and the vlog was so early on that it also people people in the comments i think at the time the few followers i had were like oh i didn't even know you played poker like and then it sort of turned into a poker vlog because i was like yo if i'm gonna make a gambling channel or be gambling this often i should probably find games that have a chance to be beat <laughs> which are none of the other games in the casino right um what uh What's uh, experience? A lot of a lot of interesting, but similar question. We've covered actually a lot of the questions. Some great questions here. Uh, what about music? Were you listening to music in the car? What what was like? Do you, do you listen to music when you play, or were you just zoned in the whole way? Just yeah, no no music in the car. I was just sitting in in. I was gonna say fear, but I was actually not that fearless. I was sitting in confusion uh, and anxiety, I guess, a little bit because of the cop sweat. And yeah, I'll listen to music when I play. Um, I have playlists on my Spotify. People might know from my Twitch, like there's electronic music and it's like literally my playlists are titled not gay, sort of gay, very gay. And very gay is like Aqua and like Venga Boys. And then, you know, not gay is like uh, bloody beat roots and stuff. So I don't know. I listen to stuff like that in punk. Um, I did the World Series of Poker reach out to you? Like when you won, did they like want to do something with you, or like was they uh, did they did they use you for any stuff or like a promo? I mean, you guess you're sponsored by America's Card Room, right? But like, did, was there any contact with you on trying to use your story or your stuff, or do they do anything? No, not really. I did. They did like a digital like bracelet ceremony, but um, they do that for most people, I think. And no, I was surprised. Um, not surprised, but I, I don't know. You I would have thought that they would want to do more of it, marketing it, but like maybe the poker community was anyway, you know? Um, right. Makes, makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. What about uh, Latin America? Have you ever been to Latin America for poker? You've done the cage, but have you ever gone down to South America or Russia? So we got a question about Russia specifically. Have you been to uh, Russia? I've never been to Russia, no. And I don't, I don't plan on going. Um, not on your top of the list not, not on, on my top. top of the list australia if aussie millions is a thing ever i don't know if that's gone forever just i want to go to australia one day and brazil which you would know about i think i'd i'd end up chopped up in the favelas i don't think i can go to brazil i think that i'd run my mouth and get uh dead pretty quick there so i'm a little shook 
yeah, if you if that's a concern that stands out, I would, <laughs> I would, not, I would just avoid it. Um, but you know, love I love Brazil. I got nothing but love there. But I, I hear what you're saying. It's, Ecuador. Uh, my girlfriend has the family is you know she's half from Ecuador and um they have some land there or something like I'd go there one day. Uh, pizza or quesadilla? Pizza. Who's your favorite poker player? Yeah, I guess in the context of growing up on high stakes or growing up when you saw people characters in the game, like was there anyone you really like? Wow, that guy's cool, or that's I like how he plays growing up. Yeah, uh, Tom Dewan and then Luke Schwartz at like after him. Like uh I had Luke on the podcast. He's uh he's really all time. He's he's a fun guy, man. He's fun. He's a he is like like you know, you may say I'm good for poker. A bunch of Luke Schwartz and Tony G's like are the, like so good. Like we need characters, man, and and like you're right. You got like, the, the the quiet staring and all this stuff. It's like, all right, I get it. You know, try to be consistent and have fun, but really people, you need people talking, you need entertainment, you need engagement. And, and it's, it, we, it's missing the characters like the old school Matt, you know, Mike the mouth and Helmuth me kind of blowing up and Tony and him and whatever, like you need that for, for, uh, for live poker. You need some, some interaction. You know, I had, I'll tell you this. I had Matt Savage on the podcast and one of the most interesting things is the rule because it's confusing about talking at tables like you know i was over at the uk at uh dust till dawn and kasuf was there maybe it was january of this year even and this guy is going a million miles an hour he's talking every hand i got king queen you you i know you got the nut flush i'm gonna make you know like you've seen his stick it's ridiculous he got yeah. some weird you know hit some shit about him and what happened and he was doing some crazy stuff or whatever but in terms of poker like that whole jamie gold that whole like it needs to be closer to that there has to be some guideline governor on it but over there, you can do all that. It's just like, that's like standard. You can say, I, I think you have this. Like, I'm, I know you're bluffing or I'm bluffing. I got the ace of hearts. You can't call. Like, you know what I'm saying? For like, anything televised, they, they absolutely should have that rule, I think. like uh, just telling me, because you know the problem, I think as a blanket default, just to make it simpler for dealers and the situations, they're basically like, you can't talk. Like, right. I'll hand me and you and I'll be like, yo, bro, how, how, how was your day? You can't, they're like, no, you can't talk. Like that, like you cannot, and I'm like, but Savage is like, that's not true. You just can't there's talk like about, a, your hand. about your exact hand, but you can say, right. I think you have King queen. I think or like or certain stuff. Like it's very gray, but it basically how Savage uh, talked about it. Like it's what you can do way more than you think. And it's not right. The rulings in most places on what they say and how you can talk. And it's, it's, it's kind of a bummer because like, I'm honestly almost uncomfortable and imagine someone that's there for the first time or is not experienced. Like they're just like, like they think their hands dead if like they talk or like they're going to get kicked out of the casino and it's like weird and it puts a nervous energy out there. Um, yeah. That, that's just such a good point that it makes it less like fun. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. It'll make live poker less like a fun atmosphere or whatever. Or like I was at a Borgata tournament where a guy, we were just talking about like the vlog or something. And a guy next to me was like, okay, can you guys stop with all the cursing? It's like, Oh, are you offended at a fucking poker table? You sicko. Who's probably like, had been sitting here for 38 hours and abandoning your family. You're offended by our curses. Shut up. Uh, yeah. But so, so like, yeah. but yeah, the Wilka Soup stuff is like, I think even though people don't like, like that's so cool. Jamie gold talking, even though he's like borderline bullying people. Yeah, he was, like, killing cards. I remember he like, they remember that he like flipped yeah. the card over and yeah. was like, in, like crazy shit. This guy right. just like, orchestrated, you know, ran it off all the way through. But like, you know, if they could have had a, 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 a live cam on that guy for the whole thing, like it would be, you know, who knows what he did for yeah, those I'd pay so much to watch that. If there was like just like a feed of his like hands like live edited, I'd pay so much for it. Yeah, it should be. I mean, I think just multi way, no talking, and then heads up, like you could do what talk about whatever, whatever. But it does take time. Like the one thing I will say that that I guess I get is like one it makes it simpler for dealers. And then I went to after playing at Borgata, where I think it's due to dealer indifference or mostly playing there on the east coast that they'll let you talk when you're heads up. Um and and then I went to Foxwoods and they're like just no talking at all. And it did make things faster, but like where people aren't on the rivers, like just like talking to a person for three minutes, trying to decide what to do. But that stuff is so fun. Like, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. I'm horrible um, at it too, by the way. I just want to be able to do it. But every time I try to table talk, I don't even know what I'm achieve, trying to achieve. And I, I, I blow it every time. I, I love talking. I think it actually helps me and I, and I wish I did it more and, and I do think you are, I guess, in theory, if you just go robotic, it's it's better maybe to try to just like not give anything away. But I just think it's, you know, more fun. And if you can kind of balance a bit, um, it's it's good. 
Uh, actually, you know, I was just thinking about this would be in, in content. I think this has got to come soon as at some of these tournaments and stops and the world poker tour, WSOPs, whatever, they should really have like, you know, like in the NFL, they have like helmet cams and the ref have cams. Like they should have like cams to give to the players. Like you just like clip on and they like give you like the view and you could like, you know, push your cards down or, or like a microphone to like for the coverage. And in some of these events that they have like mic'd up, you know, Yo, that's like a that's great a, idea. Yeah. Just like collecting microphones. Yeah. At the end of the day or whatever, it's like pipe up a guy every table or two and just have it and let him talk and have it recording and use it for, for some stuff. I, I think that's going to probably happen eventually. That's um, a great idea. Yeah, that'd be super cool. I miss the old edited like World Series of Poker. I, I know we everyone watches a live, the main event or whatever now, but like those are cool. The for sure. edited ones. Yeah, I, I agree completely. Um, who... Who's your, do you have a favorite streamer, YouTuber? Like whose content do you try to like sweat if you ever have some free time or just to check in on how they're doing stylistically? Do you ever, do you ever look at a few that you kind of go to? Um, no, not really. I'll say you're my favorite streamer because I'm, because I'm on here right now. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. Like uh, bet on Drew and John Party because they were just cool guys I met at the, um, at the cage they they worked with ACR and they both are building their streams or whatever. And, yeah. and then of I course- saw- I saw Ben Andrew just had a 17 hour stream. That was, that's pretty yesterday. I mean, that's pretty savage. Uh, not, that not, not many times like that. I, I can count my, my sessions that, that on my hand, you know, how many times I've done something like that. It's not often, especially the stream. That's a lot. To do Yo, that's a lot. That's crazy. Um, but, but yeah, he, he was cool. And then, uh, on YouTube, like Jeff Boski, cause he's my friend. And then Daniel Negreanu, I'll watch his, like, I'll check in and like, I'll click a Brett Owen and Andrew Nimi vlog, but um, I don't know, man. I like them all except Doug. I don't know. And he, I like Doug's videos. Never mind. I don't know. <laughs> you guys will hug it out down the down the line, I'm sure. Um, who who? If you could play heads up for someone, uh, would you? Is there anyone you love to like battle? Would it be Doug? Do you think just because like it'd be fun, or you just want yeah. to beat him? I was willing to lose to him uh, in his warm up matches. He almost let me play him one time, but I like missed it by five minutes or something. He messaged me on Twitter in one of his warm up matches. I- I'd love to play him. I'd lose, but it'd be fun to play and try. Right, for sure. Um, who? What about uh, the the nickname? Did you get the 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 gambler the gambler or gam- the degen? What's your what's your what do you got the gambler degen? What do people call you? What's your like degenerate your, your- gambler? which I, i'm rolling my eyes at but i just wanted to make clear what the channel was at first when i made that title um so all right uh fair enough and what is uh what what to you do you think is the biggest challenge in poker is it rta is it solvers what do you think is the the biggest like uh, obstacle coming up here in the online poker world over the next coming coming years yeah our, our, our rta like yeah for sure people real real time assisting or whatever are solving and like i mean um that i think for sure is is uh the biggest obstacle yeah i don't know how you even stop it or whatever maybe you could do like uh how certain sites don't let you have stuff open but then people can have another computer right or something like that like if you're not allowed to have other programs open while you're on certain websites um i don't know uh, yeah, no, I think it's there's no doubt about it. At the same time, it's a little different for tournaments and cash games, you know. And tournaments are it was fun because I, I, I just you see like different styles, you know, people that know or GTO like still exploitatively. There's always stuff to do, and there's really not all these the same situation. There's multi way pots. Like I don't actually think that tournament poker is really in jeopardy uh, for a while, it, especially in these like low, you know, you talk of 25ks and 50ks and stuff. Like sure, the best of the best, the elite, are they going to be better? Yeah, but like you know at some point playing a 200 500 tournament online with thousands of people that go all the time like I, there's going to be money to be made there's going to be opportunities and still there's a lot of luck and variance and people just they love it you know yeah like games that are dried up online in general it makes sense but also shorter time banks can help that i mean it's frustrating to not have time when you need it but if you if you just make the time quicker and there, there's ways to, to to work yeah you're you're right right Biggest cooler you ever took? Is there a spot where you were deep, big tournament, sick beat, river, or something you just stands out? You're like, man, my whole, this could have been way different or a main event, anything that stands out? No, I'm very lucky. I mean, there's been bad, bad. Oh, the Venom, I guess I was like uh, uh, 20, final 20 something for a million dollars. And, uh, you know, I got it in bad. I got, I got it in a spot where you jam tens versus aces, but I, 
turned a 10 and then he rivered an ace. Um, and so for at first it was a million dollars and I only cashed for like 24 K. Uh, and so that, that, that was like the biggest, like, yes, no moment probably. Yeah. That, that's that brings up a bad memory for me my biggest equity pot i ever lost it was uh and i didn't it wasn't in the hand was was cannoli at the world series november 9 final table second hand of the second day of the final table uh he had aces all into tens pre-flop and, and got binked on the flop and it's just so hard those spots are like you know it's just like you can't recreate it you could play as many turns as you want you're just not going to get uh, right e spots for 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 millions of dollars as a four to one favorite, you know, you can, you can bet a lot or be a good trader or bet, make good bets, but hard to put that big of a bet down at 80%. Dude, um, that's why the Matt Affleck hand uh, against Duhamel is like, still breaks my heart. Even thinking about it makes me sad and he's fine. He's doing his videos at, at pokercoaching.com with Jonathan Little and he's, I see him on ACR and stuff, but like, there's like 3 million in equity or something. He's, it's like, yo, it's the most heartbreaking hand. Like, yeah, it, it still yeah. hurts. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I, you know, my accountant's actually Steve Daneman. You remember him? Uh, I don't. Se he got second in the main event to Joe Hashem that uh -huh. year. But uh, it's just like funny, you know, because again, Steve Daneman, very happy guy, has twins, great, very successful, got a nice score. He was 50 50 with his, his, uh, the guy put him in. He made a couple million. You know, he's still an accountant, very happy, very good life. But it's just funny, like Joe Hashem, the peak of poker, takes first. And then he's like a superstar for a decade in the, in the, in the world, right? Like the difference in that, yeah, you know, that. Like you beat 7,000 people and then you got one more and it's like 50, 50, doesn't even matter who's better, right? It's heads up and, and shit happens. And uh, yeah, it's just crazy. Or like, you know, you hit that Joe Hash from hit queen seven of diamonds all in pre to nines smokes it like for tournament life with seven left and then wins it. Like these are things that it's just, you can't explain it. It's just math and, and, and like, it's just meant to be or whatever. Right. Like, do you, do you ever think about that? The butterfly effect or like for how, sure. why, why stuff works and you know, man, like why was I supposed to win this flip or, you know, like, do you ever, do you ever go deep and kind of get caught in the matrix about thinking about stuff like this? I, absolutely. Yeah, I do. Because I don't deserve, like, I was like, why am I so lucky? I don't like deserve to win these or anything. It's like, is there, uh, that's like on the deepest level, I'm like, oh, is there anything like I'm supposed to do with this? Right. That like, whatever level you believe in God or poker gods or anything. It's like, am I, you know, is it, or maybe, maybe they want me to grow the game. Maybe it's just the poker gods, not God, God involved with it. I don't know. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's also some days you'll stream or you'll be playing and you just can't win a hand. You're like, all right, I have aces. I'm all in pre I'm not going to win. I have a top set. They have a draw. I'm not going to win. And it's just weird. Like energetically certain, you just feel it at times and times it's run real good. What do you do when you're streaming? And shit's just hitting the fan. You just can't win a pot. You're not getting above starting stack. You're in your four tables and you can't get something together. Like I'm sure it's happened. Yeah, it's, it's happened to all of us. What do you, what's your like, do you just smile, take it? Do you ever cut your stream early? Do you just like laugh? What's your, what's your uh, strategy there when shit's not going well on a live stream where you're just eating it? I think I've only ever rage quit because of like punts that I've done where it's like, I, I like after I click all in or something on a horrible bluff and then, and then, and then they snap call and it was just, I realized that it was just horrible. Um, that, that, that's the most times I've been tilted. But no, when I'm not running well, I don't know. I, I could see how it makes you crazy, though. Like, I, I thought um, for sure that um, ACR had turned sets off for me. Like, I was running bad early in quarantine, and I thought that they just, like, unclicked let Ryan DePaulo ever flop a set button. Yeah, I, I wonder about that, too. Like, it's funny because – you start thinking about conspiracy theories and not like ghosting or, or I'm sorry, you know, like uh, what's it called? Uh, super users and shit. But you know, I, I wonder about that sometimes too. Like, Oh man, like it'd be interesting, like sites, you know, for them or for big events. Like, obviously it's like crazy to think like that, but just wonder if there's like any shenanigans or not. But I can say as a team pro for years now with partying with stars, I don't feel like there's any, any run good. If anything, I feel like they want to show her like, you know, like they punish the, punish the pros and, and she, right. It, uh, you know, it's just tough. Like it's, it's just, it's funny though. I definitely, yeah, I just mean, yeah, if, I, if I'm losing that much, I get that psychotic, but it's for sure not happening. But I was like, the, the, yeah, the idea that there's a set, but, um, I'm, I'm, I know, I, I, no, I know, you know, yeah. I just wanted to make clear that I, uh, I don't, there's no set button like whoever on Reddit. Yeah. The cash out curse. I'm sure. You've heard that people believe when they cash out, they can't win. I've heard that a lot. <laughs> I've never heard that one actually, but that's a big one. Uh, ask ghost of Ben legend. What's up brother Marco in the chat here live asking, who do you think is the funniest content creator in poker other than you? I don't know. None you of them like, are funny. Like who's in like a fun guy, like not necessarily for their, 
they're either their vlogs or the best, like who's, who's just kind of like you laugh like out loud when you see them and, and what they do. Are you the guy? I mean, I, you are, I'd say you're one of the more energetic hype, kind of funny, like do a lot of parody and fun kind of mixed in, but who else is in that category? Joe Ingram makes me laugh a lot, actually. Like his, uh, like he, he's very funny and great at at podcasting and stuff. And the, the way he he's neutral and stuff, I'd say he's he's funny. Um, Jeff Boski can be fun. I don't know. Everyone's charming, but maybe Joe Ingram. None of them. I watched the reason I has it th- like stopped and thought was because I don't watch any any other poker stuff because they're funny at all. Like right, I think that um, I'm maybe the only one, maybe that if I trying to take myself out of it that I would watch to be as a hybrid of like, Oh, I get to see this kid gamble. And I think he's funny. There, there's really nobody that I watch and think like, Oh, that's like reason number two. It's like maybe reason number 10 that they're not, not funny. Right. Yeah. It makes, makes, makes a lot of sense. Uh, what about um, poker shows? Uh, anything you'd want to play? Anything that stands out like high stakes poker uh, play like a high rollers or anything you'd like really would, would, would get you excited to go play. That you have yeah, I mean, I would I would love to do all of it if it, you know if not for COVID. But um, really though, the biggest thing is just insane that as soon as the main event is live again, that I'm going to be able to be there. Um, which is like something that when I, I've only been with my girlfriend, fiance, three years, whatever, almost, um, not even. And it was like when we met, or not when we met, but early on, it was the Johnson final table or whatever, and I was like, yo. Like I can only dream that I somehow get rich enough to have 10 K to blow one day, not understanding that even that recently that there's like backers or like other ways or that you could get, you could build a bankroll or, or I, it was inconceivable that I would ever actually be able to play the main event. And now I for sure I'm going to, and that's just like, like insane, like a dream come true. But as far as the shows, I, I blow my money on any of them. Have you, have you ever, do you, when you sell action, is it generally to friends? Do you ever, do you ever uh, put post action on stake Kings? I'm sure you're aware of that site. Have you ever used it? Uh, no, I, I maybe should try to set up my account with them. I've talked to them a little bit for the Listen, main. I, I'm going to give you a plug here. Cause I just have to, cause I, I actually, I'm, this is, a, I've been using this for a long time. And as a streamer and content creator, I'm just going to give you a, a little hack that there is nothing better you can do than do this. Because first of all, um, I'll just use myself because it's easy and I, out of the people here and I'll, I'll show you like for, so when I post action, okay, you can set how many people you can actually cap it, but there's nothing better than streaming and letting people have a piece. So let's say you're going to play like a thousand dollar tournament and you can put it like $10 cap per person and sell 20, 30%, 50%. Like, think about that when you're streaming, what's better. You're, you're, you know, degenerate action who it's like fantasy football. Like yeah. If, if you're watching you stream and they got five bucks on you in a, thousand dollar tournament they got a little sweat like they're sweating living dying by the river it's just like a no-brainer it's no work you just tell them what you want to play they put it up they refund it if it does if you don't play or you get multiple bullets and you do no work there's none it's not like if you hit the tournament like i ape styles has 30 percent. he's at the final table of uh the ept million to first today with 30 percent on stake kings I mean, like, think that's about, think so about how you know, that's the future. I think of it, uh, even I was thinking about this a while ago. It's not possible with vlogs, but like, I was like, what's the ultimate like reason? Cause I, I think about YouTube more than Twitch, but it's for sure clear with Twitch, what you're saying that with YouTube, I'm like, what's the ultimate. All right. So we're living vicariously and sweating through a vlog, like, like Jeff Boski in a tournament or something. Exactly. What, what is the, how do I, I would be like, yo, there'd be a thing where I can like invest retroactively or something like how will he cash for and bet on it but like yeah obviously with twitch it's it's the easiest yeah usually just to friends like um but i i should uh set that up or whatever to sell because especially for this 10k i i I, no i'm not gonna bro put it up there let me buy a piece because also i'll tell you the best part of it is this right like say you put up your 10k wsop and cap it i would cap it so more people can get it you're gonna sell out anyway you sell what you want to sell. Um, but you know, the best part is you don't have to deal with it. Cause yeah, you, we have right for the best part. Yeah. Sell. You got to text them. How did you do? They want updates. No, listen, man, here, I put in 30% up. I'm capping at 50 bucks a person. Good luck. Here's my markup, whatever. No markup, some markup, small markup to make to fucking WSOP main event. Good luck. Come get it. And when you're done, you either get all the money in one shot or you have to send out money and again, one shot. So it's like, you know, I, man, I've dealt, I've dealt with 
stuff over the years and done it with friends, even to the point where I'd rather like just have my friends. I'd be like, Hey, look, it's on here. Like, come get it. I don't want to deal with it. I just don't want to text and deal with five people or three people. You know, it's just too much of a, too much of a hassle. So whatever, bro, if you want, if you're interested, let me know. It takes two seconds. And again, you don't even have to do it. Like you can just, you can send a message and say, Hey, I want to sell 20%, this, 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 they'll do it for you. So I, uh, if you want to do that, just send me a message. I will know you're, it's a good, you just for sure. So I mean, yeah, dealing, dealing with people. It's the best invention on thing. And not to me, I'm, you know, I've been with them for over five years and, and I just think it's a great, great, uh, great thing but um all right well listen i we've covered a lot this is two over two hours live we got it the retweet to giveaways or anything you want to touch on we haven't touched on people I, I showed your twitch showed your youtube you got instagram twitter now is instagram right there's stories on twitter uh, i don't know if you saw that did you see that i heard that but i haven't seen what it looks like yeah. yet so you actually my first ever twitter story i put this out yesterday so oh thanks yeah, twitter, Glad very, to very nice pop um, your that, cherry there it is. Um, so we covered a lot. We covered your win, your, your thing. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Any, any message you want to say to the poker community? Anything that's burning on your mind before we do this giveaway? Um, Not possibly COVID right now, which is a sweat. We're going to have to have you update. You need to send a message out later. I hope you let me know. Yeah, how- yeah. I hope I don't have COVID. Not just for me. Well, I hope that I don't get COVID so I don't spread yeah. it to people. But um, no, listen, stop. Wait, I want to I want to think of an angle angly message so I can get, like use it to my benefit. Something like stop bluffing me on the river. I'm always going to call um, something like this. Or like I'm not going to bluff anymore. So just be warned that anytime you guys are calling me, I'm going to have it. <laughs> no one's going to believe that. But that's my message. All right. That that might that might work. That could help, I think. So <laughs> listen, listen, I I appreciate you. I appreciate you not again. You could have easily pulled the plug having a COVID sweat and, and not feeling up to, to par. Your energy was high. I always enjoy your content. I do think that, you know, again, when I see bits and pieces or tweets or, you know, posts, I really, I, I like your, your, your demeanor. I like, I think you're great for poker. I think you're, you're, uh, you're, you're someone easy to root for. You know, it's like, that. I feel like, you know, in, in poker, there's a lot of times where if it's not your friend or someone you don't know, and you're like, it's just like, it's a competitive landscape. Like all oh, this guy's on Twitch or he's going to do like, I always, I genuinely root for people, but you're very easy to root for. And like, I'm like, oh man, this guy's three handed WSP. Like, I hope he wins, you know, like it's, 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 you're easy guy to root for. So I always, I'm always pulling for you and I, I appreciate uh, what you do. And I appreciate how much work goes into your craft and, and uh, doing all the, I, I trust me, I get it. And I, and I appreciate it. So let's, uh, let's roll this winner. You tell me when, and someone's going to win a $55 ticket courtesy a party poker today. We got it. We shout out ACR. I even gave him a tag today, but we're team party. Cool. We're giving away. We're giving away uh, a ticket from them, and and I'm gonna be streaming later today. Are you streaming anytime soon? Can people watch you stream any poker soon? Uh, they probably can, but I don't know when that would be yet right now. So, right, yeah, probably not a good idea to fire up a stream with possible COVID and not being you know locked in for ten hours on a computer, not feeling good. But uh, appreciate the two hour today, and you just tell me when, and I'm gonna roll it. Oh, br- go fire. Boom. Someone's got it coming. It's loading up a lot of engagement. A lot of questions going to take a, take a second here. I hope we get to uh, meet up, whether it's a cage live or a live stop. Is there anywhere in the world I've got to ask you that you love to go traveling wise uh, for poker? What's your favorite stops in, in casinos or cities to play poker? I don't know, but I know that my uh, Katie fiance wants, can't wait for Barcelona to start again or whatever to be able to go there for EPT. So I, I haven't been many places for poker that I can't even answer that. Um, Fair enough. Well, look at that. We got a right here. We got Jamie Trapa Booth just scooped a $55 ticket. Hopefully you parlay that. And, and I guess the last question I have is how did you start poker? Something I forgot to ask you, how did you get into it? What was like your first ever encounter? Was it a, a friend you saw playing? Was it a moneymaker on WSOP? How did you ever, did you like start to play? Uh, no, yeah, just friends were playing a home game and I played, didn't know what I was doing. But then really my introduction was, uh, I was living in a 10 bedroom share in Chinatown, illegal housing, mad ghetto, like, um, it, it was an old brothel, but, and this French kid was playing on, on, that was where you lived? huh? Yeah, that was where I lived for like a year in college. Um, going to Brooklyn college from there, it was under like under the Manhattan bridge. Basically it was really, there were rats in the ceiling, like legit, like you hear at night to like, and then punch the wall and it would stop. And I'm like, yo, there's confirmed rats in the, in the ceiling, but, but you lived inside of a brothel or like it was in a uh, an brothel. I'm sorry. It was, it used to be. Okay. That's well, good to clarify. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, I was just, I was just, I was a hoe. I was, 
That's how I made my money, Jeff. All right. Well, hey, li hey, listen, I'm not judging anyone. I was just talking out loud. Let you. So, okay, you lived there, and uh, and then you saw what the people were playing, and you yeah, kind first of kid lived there was playing like three dollars sit and goes with ninety people, and I was like, you could win ninety seven dollars, and then started playing from there. And uh, um, what about your hit? What about the positive history? Were you like a fifty dollar couple times into into a, into where you're at now? Did you get like what was? How did you start getting your role? That was um well my role now is different than then because it's like, this is just like from like when sort of, uh, and then the Colossus obviously, and then, and then winning the bracelet. But that, then I would deposit frequently. I was like losing. And then I like won a hyper turbo, a huge one, like for $14, won like 11, like $1,100 or something huge for, for me at the time and stuff. And it was, uh, um, and then had money from then, but, right okay i was barely when it, you know you yeah you were you were just sort of uh yeah. you, you, you coasted up but you stuck with it and did you always what would you have, tell me again about your job though like you you I, I have some notes here that you um you, you basically were working on broadway as a in the box office but what was like you said your boss didn't get along or something or like he basically you were starting to youtube and they didn't really like it or, or, or what happened there did you get fired did you quit what was that transition? Yeah, he fired me from that theater. Well, so you get laid off between shows anyway when there's no show at your theater. Okay. Uh, and so it was a little bit um, after Colossus, I think, that our show was closing. And then I don't remember my life, dude. I'm, my, bra my brain is like fried. But basically, he fired me at the end of whatever show that was, essentially saying, like, it's clear to me YouTube's more important to you than this. And, and But we had had beefs a lot. Like, he would tell me, you know, don't, like, stay off your laptop or something. And then he caught me, like, hiding on the corner of the stage, like, uploading a video, like, fixing the thumbnail or something. Uh, so, that I don't know. And 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 then from there, though... Was it, uh, were you stressed out? Like when you first, when you stopped getting that check, when you officially out, was it a, was it like a sweat for you on what was going on? Or were you just kind of like, F it, I, I want to follow my passion and go for it. Yeah. I had had enough of, uh, of like some base of like YouTube money or whatever that, and I, I was not sweating. I was bummed. I got fired from somewhere. I don't want to leave on bad terms with somebody, but also I'm on good terms with all the other people at other theaters. So it was just like really a personal issue, not like a me and the whole I'm not like blackballed from the industry. I actually, right after that, became a member of the union. Um, and and the, the the boss fired me. And then the number two and number three there were two of my endorsers to get in. So okay. it, it was a personal clash, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I'm also an ass. I'm probably hard. I'm not very easygoing as, a, as an employee. So, like, you know, I, I definitely had it coming in a lot of ways. Um, okay. Well, listen, I think we have covered an absolute we i got to know you a lot better i'm really happy that we got to do this hopefully we'll do you know again a, a second version in the future i'm sure you got many more big scores and hopefully you have the content in the, along the way that you're either on twitch or youtube while you're while you're doing it so you know i appreciate it. hopefully we can collaborate meet up in some live stops do some fun stuff and you know i uh best of luck with your potential covid i hope you don't have that and best of luck getting married and and uh when the kids do come in and all that you know again enjoy do everything to the max and, and just realize things change and uh it, you'll love it no matter what it's always good and and uh appreciate you man I really thank you for the time can't wait to uh collaborate in the future thanks man thanks for having me on all right all the best that's ryan DePaul. that's podcast number 104 in the books i'll be streaming later today on twitch we got alexandra botez the the chess phenom tomorrow. That's going to be a fun one. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern. And we'll see you back on Twitch in about half an hour, guys. So I'm going to grab a bite. Thank you for watching. And thank you so much to Ryan. Even with COVID potential, he <laughs> hunkered in, put this podcast through. And we will have this on all the different outlets as well as, of course, you can watch the video replay on YouTube. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks to Ryan. We'll see you soon.